on that note, Par, uh -huh. uh, speaking of people on the outside looking in, there we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what do you think about the Blackbeard Pirates? So, you know, it, it's a break week. Um, we don't really have too much to talk about. I don't want to beat a dead horse with Dorian Bragi or what's going on with Egghead Island. But I thought, you know what? We, we, we should talk about the Blackbeard Pirates because they didn't show up, right? A lot of people yeah. thought they were off the coast. Those were the guys that were going to make an appearance. But turns out that is not exactly the case. You so, know what's funny? I saw a spoiler. What's up? Uh, like, you know, I, I hopped on Twitter afterwards. And so, like, you end up seeing pe people's spoiler stuff that's not ob like obviously after the chapter it's not like they go back and delete all their tweets so i saw one that said that like uh uh uh, uh the i think it was like the new giant pirates like showed up on blackbeard ship and i forgot who it was just like who retweeted that and i was just, and then when i saw the chapter i was like what the hell and i do know that like um like uh uh, uh he may in Chestnut specifically, they were saying that, like, this chapter was wild because, like, so many people just made up shit during the spoiler stuff. And I was like, damn, what the hell? And then they, uh, I saw some of their tweets and I was like, holy shit, there's, where, how did someone get this kind of information from, like, what we saw in the chapter? But, well, fake spoilers are everywhere, dude. Yeah, yeah. But I, but, but I feel like, because, you know, week to week, I hear stuff from you. And then, um, you know, when you come onto the stream, and it's not like it's not like that wildly disingenuous right like that's very obviously not black like if you saw the if someone saw the panel and then it's like that's not blackbird ship at all like it's a giant massive yeah. viking ship looking thing right so it's like no nah, that's a goofy one but um but yeah yeah sorry what were you saying about the uh the the blackbeard stuff uh, shit, I don't even know anymore. My bad, my bad. I just, no, it's good, good, it's good. I was, I was like, hmm, fake spoilers, I don't know. Uh, Yeah, but, like, as far as the Blackbeard Pirates not being here, I think that, like, means that we were more right. Like, our original take, or, and, like, you know, between um the refugee ship being, um playing an important role being a mirror from ohara and then you saying like you putting the pieces together that like oda showed us the refugee ship and then blackbeard ship and then in this in this uh thing it's like if the giants are coming and that's their ship did they come with multiple ships or did they just protect the ship and then the marines couldn't follow the thing and what did they tell did they tell the the escaping vessel like head towards elbaf and we'll be going this way, and we have, we're not gonna guide you. We're, we're just gonna keep going this way. You know, like that feels weird when we know that there was a Blackbeard ship. We saw the Blackbeard yeah. ship. Like, so if the Blackbeard ship and the refugee ship are tied together, and the refugee ship wasn't shown, but we were shown the giants running interference, to me, it sounds like, yeah, the Blackbeards and the Blackbeard pirates and the refugees are more closely linked, especially given the fact that, like, like it'd be so weird. It'd be like Stussy level weird. Whereas like you know when like we when it was just like who is Vega Punk calling? And then we found out it was Stussy. And it's like wait, how did Stussy just get on a Denden Mushi in front of Luchi and Kaku? Sure, let's just make it work. That'd be the same level of weird of like if the Blackbeard ship was just amongst the Buster call, just like weaving through and nobody noticed a Yonko ship. You know what I mean? It's not just your casual logs and whatever. No, it's a Yonko ship, right? Like, and it's just what is on Egghead or in the Buster Call, or like that wouldn't make sense. Otherwise, it would just be waiting on the outside. Which, fine, that's a possibility. But I think, like, uh, the original our our original assessment of like they have the refugees. That's why they're not being like included in the conversation with the giants and stuff. I think that that's where the Black Pirates are, and it, I feel like it's so much weirder. If the Blackbeard Pirates are still here, but it could be them. I don't know, but like we have the giants here. We, we're we're mixing it up with Shanks. We just saw Shanks with these giants on Elbaf, so it's like I don't, I don't even really know. But like we both talked about it, like adding Blackbeard to this situation with these working pieces, it just makes 
it more difficult for those working pieces to function with a Blackbeard uh, uh, character involved, right? So I'm kind of still on the boat that Blackbeard isn't going to like have a major... Is going to show up Yeah, yeah. If anything, it'd be minor. But like, I just think the refugee ship is the perfect, the perfect out. It just yeah. and I saw people saying like, "Oh, that's so that doesn't that's not meaningful." I got into a stream with somebody, um, and they were like, "That's kind of pointless." What we brought Blackbeard just to take the refugees. I'm like, "Damn, like that's kind of a big deal, though." Like that's a yeah, that direct... was like a major thing on Ohara, right? Like just killing the refugees because they might have information. Yeah, and that's a thematic about One Piece, like like in. T making that a plot point to me is good writing i think that's good writing to take like not everything has to be fighting based i don't i just don't know why um i get it, it's blackbeard but it's like i like like lafitte lafitte showed up at marriage Joie just to be like hey blackbeard for warlord and it was amongst mihawk and doflamingo there's no fighting there it was just a conversation but people remember that that's still like a very memorable scene that he did that like this is to me a really important thing where it's like if a kainu were here, that ship would be gone, point blank, erased. And that's a good thing on Saint Saturn and the Marine side, but Kizaru chose to prioritize something else. And what does that mean? Well, if it if if Kizaru's oversight allows these refugees into Blackbeard's hands, then that means that Akainu's methods are justified, which makes the story really interesting because from the reader perspective, it's not that it shouldn't be justified. It's just that, like, we'd want to see some development, right? When a character like Akainu keeps on getting validated, 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 then it's like, yeah, like, he's right. Like, why would he do anything else? And that's an interesting uh, way to go around the story. I feel like as Fleet Admiral, he has uh fujitora uh, uh making mistakes he has ryokugu going against his orders now kizaru too he has Kiz kuzam leaving that's this i think that's an, an awesome setup he's gonna be mad at all of his admirals that's perfect and, and yeah I, I don't know it's just like it's interesting so so yeah. we are making the assumption that blackbeard is the one who took the researcher ship uh, it's not confirmed it could still be the giants because i feel like that's the easiest solution now but we did yeah. see the researcher ship with like the Blackbeard pirates on the same page. So I, yeah. I still think that there is something funky going on there. And yeah, th that is what I do like because it, it puts us into this gray area like, oh, you know, we're seeing what it's like if the researchers did escape. A kind of would be justified in a, in a weird way, right? Like O'Hara, like he killed a bunch of civilians. But, you know, if one of them just had information, then maybe Blackbeard, who now probably has the researchers, can make big use out of it. Maybe yeah. he does learn something about Sun God Nika. Maybe he learns about uh, a Poneglyph or the ancient robot. Like, yeah. there could be some big implications with this. And, and and another thing with Blackbeard, too, is that I don't even think it's Blackbeard here. Like, people want, yeah. like, Marshall <laughs> D. Teach here to, like, fight everybody. And it's like, I don't know, man. Like, the, the timing is kind of strange. Like, I would say it's even stranger than the Giants, in a way. Yeah, a little bit. Like... Blackbeard, last we knew, was on Winner's Island, and he, yeah. whether or not he took enough damage, it was like he wasn't able to pursue a swimming polar bear, right? Like that yeah. to me, that's like all right, like that that if he can't chase <laughs> a polar bear in the Grand Line, like I, 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 like that that means that he yeah, needs a little like, break. <laughs> Blackbeard. He took damage. Is that's one thing, right? He took damage. Yeah. Could he actually recover and come to Eggat Island the very next day and fight sure. Luffy and Saturn? I'm not too sure about that. Yeah. And then on the other end, it's like, wait, Kobe escaped Hachinosu. They now have Garp. Hachinosu has been somewhat destroyed. Like you would think that he'd be like, hey, let's go home for a minute. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I, I just feel like Egghead Island, while it is like a big and important island for us, the Straw Hats, for Blackbeard. I don't really see that to be the top of his priorities right now. Yeah. Like, um, again, unless, because the thing is something that we brought up uh, a long time ago and the timeline is hazy for me at the moment, but in order for me to like, believe that Blackbeard were, were coming to Egghead, I, to me, it would make sense that like, it was a premeditated move. Uh, yeah. Rather than like, 
I, I guess he could see like, oh my God, like the Marines are going to bust or call this island and Luffy's there. This is a perfect situation for me to go to. Whereas we've seen him, his literal decision making is like, let's go like to the, like now that the Navy is, is spread thin, let's try to get a priority target, which was Boa. But even with Boa, he didn't necessarily care to get the Boa thing. He was like, okay, I'm denying them Boa. That cool right and yeah. he literally said the lines like why would i let the navy reap the, these rewards and boa's fruit we don't know the reasoning but it he seems satisfied enough to just get kobe they don't get boa and he comes back and what did he say about kobe he was a bargaining chip for the world government to make him a part of the world government an actual king now he has garp but along that way he got pudding pudding garp and along that way he wanted moria he like he I don't know how far out of his way he went for Moria, but like he took Absalom as a thing to lure Moria here to ask him to join the crew. But now Moria is not dead as confirmed by Perona. She's he's underground and Moria's fruit is an insane uh, variable here because there's so many ways that you could use Moria and pudding in conjunction with Blackbeard. And then he goes and waits on a specific island, one of three, because he was waiting for one of the three monster captains for the Poneglyphs, it seems. So, like, what else could he want from Vegapunk? Like, if he, it, it almost make more sense if maybe he just goes straight to Vegapunk for the Poneglyph stuff. Like, we don't necessarily have a knowledgeable thing that, like, Vegapunk is a world government agent that, like, his projects are largely secretive to the point that Blackbeard was surprised about the Seraphim project, right? Like he didn't even know the Seraphims were a thing and he got Kobe who can order the Seraphims and he didn't even take a Seraphim, which, you know, fine, whatever, right? But like if after seeing the Seraphim, he could probably put two and two together. Like, oh, Vegapunk has these. Oh, maybe I want that. But like, and then also Vegapunk has like devil fruit technology, but like Blackbeard's already, his entire crew already is devil fruited up. So it's like, what else could he want from there? I'm not saying it's impossible, but like it just adds like a lot of confusion as to, you know, him coming here at this time, the way it would play out, um, like the fallout of a buster call and luffy whatever like why would he want to come here but we know that the giants they they came here and they said they came here for luffy it almost sounds like a mission S sort of like a mission they, they, it sounds like they're and they read the newspaper here. yeah they read the newspaper we have that they're here now right so if it's the blackbeard pirates and um the blackbeard pirates showed up before the newspaper sorry yeah yeah, throw yeah. That out there yeah like exactly like, i don't know oh, man yeah that too so it's like whatever the blackbeard pirates are coming for it didn't it what it didn't feel like as premeditated so it's it's a very confusing thing and this is one of those times it's like damn oda has like this insane chessboard going on and i have no idea but like the one thing i do want to say is I'm very optimistic about how he uses the Blackbeard Pirates because I I like the way he used the Giants here. I, I do, and I'm excited to know how it plays out, which tells me like, yo, I think I think however he uses the Blackbeard Pirates, it's gonna make sense. It's just hard to wrap my head around because we don't know Blackbeard's like goal. If we knew Blackbeard's goal, then you know, it would make a lot of sense, and then. Uh, I, I'm sure we would be able to piece things together a lot easier. For example, here, one of the things that uh, everybody kind of, like, insinuated, but we didn't really know, was, like, what are the Giants' connection to Nika? A lot of people are like, oh, maybe Nika was a Giant. Oh, they revered yeah. the sun. Oh, this stuff. We thought it, but this chapter basically confirms it. And so, like, had we had that as a canon fact that Giants revered Nika, like, uh, this Nika, the sun god... Then it was like, oh, it makes sense. They see him in the newspaper and they're going to come save him. Like, I think a lot of more people would have, when we decided, like, who's that third party and we didn't list the Giants? I think had we had this as a fact rather than a theory, then I think a lot of people might have actually had the Giants on here rather than not. So I'm so bad. I'm My headcanon like. already had, like, I already solidified that the Giants worship sun god Nika. And I still didn't think about this. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I think, I think when I say, like, you know, we had it as a theory, it's, like, a very strong theory, right? But the fact that it wasn't, like, written in the manga yet is, like, yeah, why people are, like, ah, whatever. Because, obviously, if you said that, like, oh, yeah, the Giants, 
the Giants are going to come because they revere Sun God Nika. You'd get all those comments like, well, actually, we don't know if it's Sun God Nika. There could be another Sun God in this verse. It could be the four God system, and this could be a completely different Sun God. Emu is that, actually... <laughs> no, those are the comments I ignore. I'm like, all right, never mind. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah, out, yeah. I'm out. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, the Adam Tree is indestructible. <laughs> oh, no, not the <laughs> Adam Tree argument. That's that's the worst one out there. Uh, God, oh, God. If anything... The indestructible Adam Tree. The, the one that they cut down every day to make ships, yeah. Of yeah. course, of course. If anything, like, I would find it interesting. I just thought about this. Like, like if Blackbeard... You know how we saw Shanks keeping tabs on Blackbeard? And, like, yeah. he went to wano because he thought blackbeard was going to be there so we that's like implied by um that dude i forgot his name i always forget his name uh hanzo i think maybe maybe hanzo um if like blackbeard goes to elbaf he knows that shanks has left it and then these giants have left maybe if blackbeard went to to elbaf i don't know why maybe the atom tree i don't know but like as far as thinking about uh ways that blackbeard could get on the world government side i think the giants are a huge pivotal point that kind of like is a forgotten not a forgotten thing but it's like we also don't know how powerful the giants are right oh yeah that's apparently, another apparently they're powerful enough to destroy the world if they're yeah. with big mom yeah and that's like and and that's the flip side of them like our head canon theory that's almost canon prior to this chapter that they revered the sun god on the flip side it's canonically told to us that the giants are this insane powerful force but like as far as our reception and our head canon of them brother we just need like what four or five mr threes and i think we're good like yeah cross guild's <laughs> gonna be raking in that bounty dude yo like that that's the i, I think wonder another... if the world government's gonna hear about mr three's feats on little garden and they're gonna be like yo we need to work with cross guild we, we need to yeah. hire these guys for a minute you know bring them back <laughs> bring back the warlord system y you know who the best person to per uh portray that it would be uh oh two people it would be magellan magellan who like he was like oh my hydro poison thing can melt steel beams and then mr three is just like here luffy here's a wax gundam and then he just puts up yeah a thing. and magellan was like punching through he's like what is this i i don't remember the exact dialogue he's like he ended up breaking through but he's like nani and then the other yeah, for, part for like a second like he was just so perplexed by the wax and <laughs> yeah. then crocodile was like well i guess even idiots have a use uh in certain <laughs> scenarios you know like i guess the wax powers aren't that bad after all yeah and then the other person arguably the more important one but i i put respect on magellan he showed up in basically everyone's top 50s but the other like person that. is uh sengoku because sengoku uh, was on the execution thing right and then like mr three was like the mvp of the moments when luffy was falling down in that time he like whipped out a copy key of the thing he unlocked it and i think he put up a, a thing to like protect in with luffy luffy turned in the fusen but i'm pretty sure mr three also did something so sengoku mr got like three made a dome to protect yeah. ace from luffy's fusen oh see because like, then... like like we had the dome for mr three and ace yeah and then yeah, we had yeah. luffy up here taking the sengoku hit so uh, yeah yeah uh... he was really just like protecting ace and the so... platform so Sengoku is just like, ha ha, I, I got him. And then he sees below Luffy. He's like, what is that? And then Mr. Three. three. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Three, low key, you know. It's pretty cool. Oh, he's, and he, he's back though, right? Because then he's in Cross Guild, right? Yeah, yeah, he's yeah, in Cross Guild. You know what's crazy though? Like, some people do like to underplay Mr. Oh, I mean, fairly. I, I, you know, I, I'm not going to argue against it. Mr. Three is pretty much fodder. But it's yeah. kind of crazy when you think about the giant thing because it's like, Yes, Mr. Three did play dirty to beat Dory and Brogy because, you know, he had them land a blow on each other, which wasn't fatal because the, the blades were dull. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't change the fact that Mr. Three's wax can still pierce the giants. Like, that's what that's what he did. Yeah, he pierced yeah. them. And not to mention, his wax was apparently so strong that the giants couldn't stand up afterwards. Like, it, it's kind of insane when they you think like about it. Down. Yeah. And yeah. Zoro. Zoro had yeah, to... Zoro. And just only Zoro's feet were waxed too. Like not his whole body, just his feet. Like Mr. <laughs> Three, if he kept on training, he probably would be a menace. Yeah, yeah. Like, like he, he'd be, he'd be crazy. 
Like he might become Mister Two and a Half soon. He might like yeah, he, might, the... he might upgrade that number, dude. <laughs> yeah, I, like it's kind of baffling. Like, could Bond Clay at that time beat the Giants? Like, maybe. Like, if he transformed into someone that they cared about, I guess. I like, know. he could deceive them. But like, Mister Three was doing some crazy things. Yeah, like, he was making moves back in the day. Yeah, like Impel Down. He had a lot of impressive things. Like. To, like even Luffy was like, "Oh my God, you made my dreams come true!" When he put the the wax boxing gloves on and stuff like that. So like, Mister Three turning to like a Mister Three wank fest now. Mister Three is arguably one of the goofiest characters that has like some of the most ridiculous things. Like I'm almost imagining, like I'm imagining the situation where it's like. Like, Mr. Three is walking, like, in a fence, right? So all you can see is his hair. And then, the like, Dory and Brogy see that, and then they, they have PTSD. They start shuttering. Like, oh, no, yeah. it's him again. We, we, couldn't, we couldn't break through his wax. Like, they just have, like, the yips, but for, like, wax. Like, a yeah, candle. They're, they're just scared burning. of candles now. <laughs> no, not the candle fear. Oh, yeah, no. I mean, hey, uh, he almost turned Brogy into, like, a whole wax figure, too, right? Because that, that was his plan yeah the birthday cake wax candle yeah thing. that was the that was, i don't even remember this feels like a fever dream but yeah, I do remember. Does, uh, <laughs> there was like some kind like of this spinning thing. like wax cake and i guess like it, it it spewed out wax particles that coat your innards and then it just turns you into a candle like it, something was going on there man but <laughs> mr three like he was a villain bro like <laughs> yeah this is gonna sound so stupid but it, it's true when i say it but like we look at characters now like Rob Lucci, right? Post like pre time skip, he was a menace. You know, he yeah. was fighting Luffy, and then boom, two years later, he's been training. Now he's awakened. Now he can try and fight Gear Fifth. He can try and fight Zoro, and he's putting up a decent effort. Yeah. Crocodile, we're expecting him to be the same way. You know, yeah. like one point nine billion. This guy's crazy. He's not the same. You know, oh no, I'm wet. I'm I'm gonna die to base Luffy <laughs> in Alabasta. It's not the same guy anymore. If yeah. Mr. Three just trained, we'd probably be speaking about him in the same vein. Yeah. Like, like yeah. if he had some sort of visual glow up or if he had some sort of crazy bounty boost, we would have to look at him and say, yo, like this guy could be really powerful. Yeah. Because we do yeah. that for a lot of like even Anel. Like we look at Anel like, oh, he lost to, to base Luffy. Right. Like base Luffy. Yeah, he was a uh, he was rubber, but that doesn't change the fact that he couldn't keep up with base Luffy. You know, yeah. he has gear second, he has gear third, he has gear fourth and fifth, which are a million times better. But base Luffy still beat him. But we're yeah. still scaling him upwards. People still think of Anel in their top 50s. And it's like, yo, like, you know, like, we got to think about it. If if Mr. 3 just trained up, he'd be insane. Do you think Mr. 2 is going to be crazier Mr. 1? Because it looks like Mr. 1 did actually, yeah. like, improve, right? Because he is still Crocodile's right-hand guy. Yeah, he went through a prison arc, too, so we have yeah. to get and then, but the thing is, Bond Clay has gone through the most prison arc. He's still in the prison. And so, he, so he fought Magellan and he somehow ended up in 5.5. Like, I don't know what happened. I, I wish we could see it one day, but he he walked out of that fight alive, which I don't know how I feel about. Yeah. Bond, I don't know. Uh, Bond Clay is going to come back as a superstar. I mean, we have to remember he like clashed evenly with Sanji. And like, like the, I think I forget the fight fully, but like, it was Bon Clay's underestimation of Sanji, uh, Sanji's weakness towards women, where he's just like, I can sense that you're, you don't have the true, like Nami's true heart or whatever. And so he was like, still fine. But they were clashing evenly, like their kicks. And then Sanji was also like the weaker than Ivankov's like second commander or whatever, right? Right. And but now Bon Clay is the queen or king, whatever title they have in in level five point five. And I fully think that Bond Clay and Mr. One are going to come back insane. Like, Mr. One's full memes because it's like the Black Blade thing is like a huge thing. He's with Mihawk now. He's a literal sword man with Mihawk, who is the world's greatest swordsman. And Mr. One is arguably the character that gave Zoro the hardest time up until, like, King, basically. And it's like... Yeah, I think Mr. One's going to come back and be an insane yeah. menace. But is he going to be like a re... Uh, like, is he going to give Zoro that same Probably trouble? Not. Probably not, right? But 
is he gonna give everybody else hell? Yeah, yeah, he's gonna do that for sure. And that's the same thing with Mr. One. I think Mr. Three is interesting because like when you really think about it, Mr. Three has like was inserted in some of the most important scenes against some of the most like the strongest you know quote-unquote characters giant sengoku and magellan like those are insane characters for and like bellamy right like a lot of bellamy came back and he was like strong but like not super strong but like he was he was doing well in the gladiator thing he got what he got wiped by the uh, elizabello punch right but so did everybody everybody got wiped out i'm pretty sure i'm pretty sure it was that that fight right barto is the only one who survived because he had his barrier and then yeah everybody else got wiped by the punch and it's like all right it's we don't know the king the king's punch is crazy right if we were to scale just the king's punch some people might have that in the top 50 but um but so the 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 whole thing with like like I, when you think about pre time skip would you think that bellamy could beat mr 3 pre time skip yeah that's a weird one right it's a weird one i feel like Bellamy, if he can get an attack in before the wax comes up, yes. Yeah. But if Mr. Three can like do a wax dome before Bellamy can land a hit, I think Mr. Three might take that victory. Yeah. Like, like, I know that sounds stupid because like Mr. <laughs> Three is kind of a bozo, but <laughs> I feel like Bellamy's attack power isn't high enough to destroy Mr. Three's wax dome. And you know but what's crazy? I, I don't know. That's like kind of like headcanon. I, I'm not too sure. Like <laughs> that's a, that's so weird. It's also crazy because Mr. Three is one of those characters that Oda gave clones to. So he he can do like what Cracker can do with like the like creating Cracker clones, Biscuit clones or whatever. Mr. Three also had clones too that like I think they I just weren't who, great. Yeah, but like he, he, let's just say Mr. Three, maybe he didn't train hockey, right? But if you were to train his fruit, could like an awakening, right? Like that. We're giving a lot of people yeah. crazy. Like, Haku is an awakened giraffe, dude. Like, Mr. Three coming back. He was already, like, let me tell you, when I was, he was a kid. He was one with this fruit, bro. Yeah, when I was a kid and that birthday cake thing with the spinning thing, I'm like, all right, I'm just going to, I'm just going to, he's smarter than me. I, I, I'm pretty sure this is, like. Because he had a birthday cake or? Well, no, no, like up? how he was using his fruit. I never would have thought to, like, oh, let me coat the inside. I would just done the normal thing and just like coated them in wax right he's just like oh i'm gonna create a timer and spin this like a he's like kind of like, like the a... joker like like why this elaborate ruse right just just kill him dude yeah so as a kid i was just like sh maybe i'm dumb and he's a star i just i, I remember watching that and i was like sure 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 let's let's let me keep watching week to week i was just like yeah yeah, yeah. mr three he, he he does his own thing. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, and and I didn't want to like pick apart like whatever random thing. Which to be fair, it is true. Like if you leave a candle on when you sleep at night, that's not good for you because the the soot and the the candle wax can coat your your uh your inner your your um respiratory system, and then that's really bad. Like people wake up with like tar in their nose and shit, and that that is not good. But obviously. Obviously, um, you know, Oda gave Mr. Three an insane level to, of that. How the hell but, did we get to Mr. Three? You um, know, part, I, I just looked at the I looked at the side and uh -huh. I I'm, I'm, I see the Blackbeard Pirates because they're supposed to be the main topic. <laughs> and then and then I'm just like, yeah, I'm, like oh. giants. <laughs> I'm looking over here. I'm like, ah, oh, Burgess is looking at me. Yeah, we got Shiryu, Van Auger. And then I'm like, wait, we're talking about Mr. Three. Like, I think we could but, talk about it for the past 30 minutes. Yeah, well, you asked. Well, okay, okay. okay. What is this segment. video? I got a great segue. I got a great segue. So, 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 to, 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 to recap, the reason why we Apple got Apple Vision Pro, JJK, <laughs> Blackbeard Giants, and now Mr. Three. At the first, this was going to be like a Blackbeard Pirate Marathon. Like, yeah. I was going to work my way down the list. And now, like, I think this is just the Yapathon, like, which is fine. Like, I, I think <laughs> that's what this was always going to be. But now it's like, I can't even pretend, you know? Like, I, I, like, <laughs> I can't even pretend it's about the Blackbeard Pirates anymore, brother. That's crazy. I, I got a good segue. I got a good segue. Okay, so, so as far as the One Piece conversation goes, because who knows how much we delayed uh, jumping through topics, right? But um, you asked me what i think like the blackbeard pirates like are gonna do like you know like now that we see the giants here like their role and we both agreed that they're like 
not doing what a lot of people still think that they are. Like people to this day are like, and I don't disagree with like Hattori being a person, right? Lafitte is Hattori, Katarina Devon is Robin. Like those theories are still here. Like like at this point, Vegapunk isn't real, and and uh, Shiryu is on the island and he's just waiting for the moment to slice up. Like I've heard, I've seen heard. I, I, I can make up a completely blasphemous statement and it's probably true. Someone probably thought about the Blackberry Pirates being on Naked. And that's all fine, right? And so then because we both agreed that the Blackberry Pirates probably won't be here, Blackberry's probably on Hachinosu and um and and the Giants are just here. Uh, and, and they took the and the Black Pirates took the researchers. We were talking about the Giants, and then the Giants with Mister Three, and, and 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 then we got to Mister Three. But you know who is more Mister Three than even Mister Three himself? Who? Blackbeard, because Blackbeard has three skulls, three pistols, and I wanted to ask you because someone asked me recently, like like I I've been posting Blackbeard stuff, and they're like, but Par, what do you think about Blackbeard having? Th like the three skulls, three three guns. What do, do you feel? Maybe that I have a thing maybe on the that's gun. That's a sign side. he is going to kidnap Mister Three next. <laughs> because Mister Three's wax powers are kind of crazy. Like that could be one of the ancient gods, right? Yeah, yeah. He, he could be a mythical Zoan. Yeah, the the yeah the, yeah. Oh my god! Like, damn. And he could like wax his chest hair too with it because right like that's the same kind of waxing right yeah 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 just different yeah, form yeah. oh dude do you think mr three could change like the properties of his wax like imagine a, a a gaseous wax just all in the air he could give caesar clown a run for his money you mean like like the resin theory for luffy but for mr yeah. three <laughs> but for mr three yeah 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 it's like how luffy is resin mr three could just be like a gaseous wax like imagine yeah. we try to hit him and then luffy like phases through him no, no, not like Katakuri, but like Smoker. And then Luffy's like, oh. Smoker? And then Mr. Three's like, no, it's just me. <laughs> yeah, he starts, he starts bopping around. You did the Squidward dance. Yeah, yeah exactly. Because that's how I imagine like a, you know, a gaseous like ghost just his phasing whole, through attacks. Like the shape of his Mr. Three, like, oh shit, you can see, see the shadow on the back. Dude, the how much do you know about like Jewish lore? Um, not that much. So I watched a horror movie. I mean, we're just talking at this point, dude. We're just talking. Uh, but I watched a horror movie last night, and it actually kind of scared me, bro. Beard, and it you scared my ass. You, I'm not taking credit for this yapathon right now. I, I forgot what it's called. <laughs> no. I I'm trying to find the movie now, but it it came out like a couple of years ago. Uh -huh. And it was about this this Jewish guy, which is a main plot point, like him him being Jewish. Uh -huh. And I think they called him a shalom, where like he's supposed to like watch over a dead body in somebody's house, and they paid him for it. Uh huh. And it was it was like a, it was like the game The Mortuary's Assistant, if you if you know what that is, where like you're just watching a dead body for the night, and like everything goes wrong. Yeah, that scared me, bro. I don't know. Okay. Okay. But what was the segue from what we were talking about to the at least tell me that <laughs> because so i was watching this movie like in my peripheral because like, i was i was playing a game and i was i saw the movie on the side and even though i was kind of like oh god i'm scared but uh <laughs> I, I don't know too much about like the like jewish tradition so i wasn't too yeah. sure what like a shalom was if, if that even what it is uh -huh. Like, like, well, uh, if, if you guys know the reason as to why he had to, like, watch over the dead body, I would love to hear it. Uh, because there were, like, subtitles, but I wasn't reading it at the time, which is kind of sad. But, and I was yeah. too scared to rewatch the movie. So, just like you don't know how we got to this movie, per se, you just wanted to say it for the sake of saying it. Um, I feel like... No, I didn't know what a proper segue was. But what I was going to say about the Blackbeard thing was that, you know, you said that, oh, maybe he's going to kidnap Mr. Three. I was going to say, because a lot of people bring up that he has three guns and um, that being a reason why he has three souls, right? And people can't fathom why he would have three guns. Can you, can you come up with a reason why he would have three guns? You don't want me to say it. 
Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you, 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 you don't want me to say it, Parker. You're going to I don't know. I don't know what Sai has in store anymore. I, I, I call it the third limb of mankind. <laughs> <laughs> That's honestly better than I thought. I thought you were going to bring up another godforsaken game horror movie thing. Oh, my God. Let me tell you about the three pistol Let man. Let me tell you about the Vietnamese par. <laughs> Dude, you know what be so crazy? What? No, let me finish this at no, least. No, no, you know how like Luffy can change the ground into rubber. Imagine yeah. Luffy makes like a Vietnamese booby trap, where like you know you're what? just walking in the forest and then you uh -huh. fall into like a little hole. hole. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and it spikes. Oh man, that that was crazy. I watched oh, a documentary man. about that, and if, apparently they they used to like coat it in feces too. So like if you fall down, you just like yeah, you just die. That's yeah, so everything. That's, everything. I mean, it's, it's a tactic, though. Like, you know, they're, they're fighting people who have greater weaponry than they do. The only yeah. thing they could take advantage of was the forest, their, their home turf. Yeah, yeah. But apparently, like, those traps still exist to, like, current day because they don't, they didn't, like, document where every trap went. Yeah. So there's still a chance you can, like, walk into an IED or, like, a, a Vietnamese booby trap and, like, meet your end. Yeah. I think one Which of is the, what I... happened to my uncle's foot. Yes. If you guys want to know about that, there's a 50-50 podcast episode where... All about my uncle's foot. Yeah, about like Sai loving toes or something. I don't remember what the title no, was. No, no, no. My, my uncle's foot got blown off and it's it's crazy, bro. Like, just don't go walking in the forest. You know how like they say don't go to school tomorrow? Just don't walk in the forest in Vietnam. Yeah, yeah. And that, that sound sound uh, uh, take. But um, the one thing... I think that this was an interesting thing about the tunnels was like the people, the Vietnamese who like manned uh one of the holes they were in there for so long that their eyes adapted to the darkness so if someone fell in they because they were in like moonlight or sunlight whatever their eyes would take forever to adjust to the point where they were equal to the the person who has been there for like months or, or weeks or whatever and also they would make like certain things so that like if you were climbing into the hole and trying to escape, you would see light and that would deter you from being able to see it, but they could see you crystal clear. And so the moment you got into it, boom, gone, dead. And it's yeah, like, it's crazy. Like oh, scary. and then not to mention the Vietnamese also dug holes in rivers. Have you seen that? Oh, shit. No, I didn't know. About yeah, that. yeah, yeah. Oh, so like, so, sense, so they used to like dig holes underground to, you know, like get into enemy quarters, whatever. Mm -hmm. and one of their entrances was actually like through rivers like they would go oh. into a river like dig a hole and then it's like super elaborate and like it's i don't know man that's crazy like i can't imagine doing that yeah it's kind of like a toilet where you have like an s hump yeah uh, pipe so that, so the, that water the water doesn't go all the way through yeah 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 but then if you add pressure to it then it goes through but um, the vietnamese were crafty back then bro yeah. like I yeah. mean, I'm pretty sure they're still crafty. I mean, <laughs> you don't just like lose that after. Yeah. Have you seen how you like make an egg roll? Like that is elaborate. Yeah. You could tell me more about that. But speaking about egg rolls, Blackbeard apparently Blackbeard's has three... third limb. Yes. And so people have asked me and I, I want to answer it. It was like, yes, the thing about Blackbeard having three, and I know it's not the same thing in the One Piece world, but it is. it was very common for pirates to have multiple guns at their hip at the thing why because guns are not still to this day are not perfect weaponry so they would shoot and instead of reloading they would just pull out another gun so it was much faster yes. than having to you know back then like if, if you had to like uh load up the gun however whatever mechanism was involved you just pull out another gun and so that's essentially given that blackbird is based off of a real multiple two if not three pirates it makes sense. And I think one of them actually had like multiple guns where he had, I think like two swords and three guns. It's smart. And, yeah. And so th to me, like that's where, like the only thing that I can't disclaim is it's like, like yeah, daddy he... Masterson, right? Yeah. Wait, daddy Masterson had like two Glocks, right? Like not two. He had two Deagles. I think he had like, or no, were they revolvers? Oh no, brother. Daddy Masterson had one, two, three, four, five, six, what? seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. He had twenty guns, bro. What do you mean? What? To one piece? Daddy Masterson, he had twenty guns strapped to his coat and his chest. This is so this is like I was like my son's age when I saw this episode. Yeah, I, oh I remember that because God. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Type in Daddy Masterson from One Piece. Like when he fights Usopp, he like whips out the coat and he's like this. 
You know, like how like a, a guy would like strip in the in a park. He just whips yeah. out the coat, and then he's just got like all the guns just right there. Yo, he is one of those like he's literally one of those like memed on Japanese pervs that like yeah, have the... or like the guy from Resident Evil Four. What are you buying? Just like he whips oh, out the, oh, the yeah, trench coat yeah, yeah, and he has the guns yeah. right there. Yeah, yeah, like that's yeah, yeah. Daddy Masterson, bro. Like he's got you know. If you're wondering why Blackbeard has three guns, ask Daddy Masterson why he has twenty. You know what I mean? Like, what's going on here? And his whole thing was like he was supposed to be what Yasop's like rival, rival or something? in a way, not not yeah. like rival, but he wanted to challenge Yasop, he and then Yasop like, like embarrassed him. Yeah, he was like Zoro to Mihawk. Like, if Yasop was Mihawk and Daddy Masterson was Zoro at the Baratie, right? Like, it's kind of like that. Where yeah. Where, like, Zoro's like, I have three swords, and Daddy Madison's like, you may have beat me with one gun, but how about 43? You haven't Daddy, checked my... <laughs> Daddy Masterson's yeah. backstory with Yasop is hilarious, because uh, he lost, and then before, like, Yasop executes him, he's like, he's like, why? Like, like, why would I execute you, right? Like, I'm mm -hmm. the winner, so I can do whatever. And he's yeah. like, oh, but my pride. And he's like, but your daughter. Like, don't you care about your daughter? You have to live. And then, mm -hmm. and then daddy's like, don't you have a son? And he's like, oh, Usopp, well, I left him for a life at the seas. Like, I, dude, that, that, I, I cackle every time I see that shit, bro. It's uh, so funny. And the better part of it is that that is like actually sort of canon. Like it, it is a canon because yeah. the anime, uh, just adapted the part that Oda had to cut from Logtown so that he could hit 100 chapters before Logtown ended. So Oda cut, like, ba I'm pretty sure all of the Logtown filler, maybe, I'm not sure about the bar scene, but I'm pretty sure I asked somebody recently and they're like, yeah, like there was interviews where he said like, yeah, this yeah the is bar scene canon. is canon, yeah. Yeah, so all of the anime filler from Logtown is stuff that Oda wrote. Whether it was going to be shown up in the manga one-to-one -one that way, we're not really sure. But, like, yeah, like, he did write that. So this story about and Daddy Masterson is, like, it's, literally it's canon, bro. what Oda wanted to portray right after we got, like, Usopp getting, <laughs> like, multitude of, like, abandonment. He got abandoned. Another... Um, Another example of something that was cut from the manga of Logtown that became canon later would be Smoker too, because I went through like a Smoker wiki page and I just I forgot this happened, but oh yeah, with Reptar, Smo yeah, yeah, yeah. Smoker was uh, when he was at the bar, he had like a flashback of Roger's execution, and we see that Smoker was there as a child, but we yeah. don't learn that until like chapter zero of One Piece, where we see that Smoker is actually there. Yeah, so it's yeah. like yeah, it, that's an anime only scene that was in the manga like years and years later oh 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 i i think in, because in the manga it just says like smoker says like that's what the pirate king said but anybody yeah. could have heard like it could have been yeah. in the newspaper it could have been it doesn't necessarily mean that but in the anime was... we see smoker there yeah and then in the manga we don't see that till way later so it's like yeah like the some of these log count scenes especially like early one piece I yeah. would consider some of the anime like pretty canon just because Oda was like right there, like working with them. But yeah. of course, nowadays he's more like standoffish, you know, it's like mm -hmm. Oda's kind of busy. He's kind of dying. They're not yeah. dying, but you know, like he, he, he has a lot of health issues. Like I, I doubt he's like, you know, he, he's not the spry 15, 18 year old anymore that he once was. Yeah. We need him to sleep more mainly. Like, I feel like a lot of like his, his doctor said, bro, work less. Your blood pressure is super high. And he's just like, no <laughs> and it's just like bro just get some more rest though like in that regard right and going back to our like live action conversation yeah i i'm sure oda personally like he really he wants to get an emmy or what like award oh academy award now right that's his goal fine but bro like if i were to measure the things that you're putting your lifespan into and it's like your health and longevity it's like oh man like maybe cut down a little bit on like the live action maybe add yourself a little bit more to the anime side because they they like you we need you a little bit more there um for sure oh uh, but uh yeah 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 what are you saying dude uh speaking of the anime side bro are you excited for the law and blackbeard fight yeah yeah that's this can... weekend I could finally uh, say it because I, I kept on almost leaking it before because um, we knew this information weeks, months ahead of time. But uh, a One Piece creator is uh, is 
uh, was the lead on a 30 second chunk, which is a significant thing. Eric Terlato, the Red Force podcast, which is yeah. just awesome that like someone in our community is like in the actual one piece thing. And to the point where like, um, and I'm pretty sure he's tweeted it too. He's like, not that he's not a rookie. He's he he's worked on many projects before, and he he's very talented. If you guys have seen like the uh, three the the four emperor uh, like Blackbeard, Buggy, uh, Shanks, and Luffy with the one with like the crazy keyframes that looks better than the way Toei did it. Honestly, that was Eric Chalada. You could see it, and that that went viral on Twitter. It went viral again uh, a few times. Um, is really really great and he's working on this or he worked on this episode and and it's really awesome that and there's a lot of big names attached to the to the next episode as well like yeah. it looks like they might actually cover the entirety of the law and blackbeard fight like it's not going to be split into two episodes mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like they might actually just keep it all right there i'm like yo like we haven't That's had good. that before in one piece i mean we have yeah. with like sanji and queen and zoro and king but this is this is a special moment like I, i'm super excited yeah which like, that's one of those things where it's like, uh, you know, when I said, like, the anime needs Oda more because that's kind of like, that's a directorship choice that the anime director chooses. And it's like, does it make sense for the story? There's been some times in the past where it's not as large as, yeah, shifting two, merging two whole episodes, uh, chapters together to make an entire episode. But they have, like, rearranged some things and, like... Uh, uh, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not good. But this time, I think, like, even from the manga perspective, it kind of makes sense to do it in one anime episode rather yeah. than split it up, right? The chapter had its reasons for it. Were they the best of reasons? Not necessarily so. But because of the way they did it in the anime, they already introduced the Blackbeard Pirates before. They gave us the fruits, they gave us all that stuff. So we already got that part, which was kind of what the first half of the chapter was in the manga then it went to like another fight and then it cut us off and we're like wait what and then it's but this way is good but they are they're not gonna do the beppo stuff right i don't they, no 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 i don't think they're gonna do the beppo stuff but from the looks of it they might they might do like the, all the fight up until the cutoff where law awakens and then blackbeard blocks it yeah yeah and that's, i don't know man it's gonna be cool gonna be good yeah nice it's yeah. nice it it might be that that's the first half of the episode, and they do a late uh, a later uh, what's it called uh, eye catcher thing because I think they did that in one episode. It, it might be one of the, the Sanji episodes. I from forgetting where they like sometimes they shift the eye catcher like a minute earlier or a minute later. I think, and then yeah. like the you know like as soon as you jump in or out you're like oh the quality either decreased or increased after the eye catcher and yeah. it's like oh shit we're in a good time if it's increased obviously but hopefully know. we don't even notice the eye catcher just just get rid of it for one episode yeah they i mean technically this the eye catchers we're getting right now are so uh i'm not remembering all the new ones or if there's multiple but like they're they're very like because it's like the egghead one so it's like high if, quality yeah, they're really high quality, but they also, like, take you out of the scene, right? Because if we're in the Law of Blackbeard fight, it has nothing to do with Egghead. And then just imagine, like, the Straw Hats in Egghead with the... And then the... And it's like, wait, whoa, 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 we were just in the middle of a real pirate fight. Like, the only pirate fight in the ocean. Like, let's let's keep the, the vibes, you know? So, the, They should man. make a new eye catcher with just, like, the Law Pirates and then the uh, the Blackbeard Pirates. Oh, That'd yeah. Cool. Yeah, Female just, like, Law? an anime-exclusive eye catcher give female law a separate bounty you know like the female law is crazy six billion nine hundred a million sixty like just, just oh no, go full memes on it right like do it we know you know the memes that'd be so yeah, crazy because I mean, law the was bounty... a part of the preview right like female law was female i think female law, law was because we saw we had like a couple of screenshots of it i think that was the preview wasn't it or wasn't yeah the, the preview yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, the preview. I thought I don't know yeah. why you said the, uh, I thought you meant the intro. Um, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. We had the preview. We got the female law, but like, 
I think female law is justified to give a higher bounty than like Roger because it's super rare. It's like a trading card, right? Because it's like, oh, it's like finding a shiny Pokemon, right? <laughs> like it's like a one in a, whatever. You have to catch law right in the egghead arc after he gets affected by a docu before he learns hockey can do things. And um, you have to catch law right then to get the female law. And I think it makes sense because his fruit is technically five billion berry bounty and they just kind of nerfed him after he ate it and that that to me is still one of the most disrespectful things anyone has ever done it's like imagine you bought a car and, and then it depreciated like 99 percent out of the lot that's apparently what's kind of crazy <laughs> yeah i mean law even more so than that it's like when law had his first bounty like the first one we saw was 200 million and it's like, yo, like, the guy has a 5 billion berry fruit. He's only 200 million. And they know he has the fruit, too. It's not like hidden information, you know? And they were actively chasing it like, when right. he ate it. Like, they were going for the fruit. That They had a whole deal set up to buy the fruit. Like, Sengoku was on the phone and Suru was going. And, like, they're just like, yo, I guess, I guess it depreciated 99%. I guess that's it. Like, they got that shit appraised by the worst fucking person. Oh, and the person who... Oh, it's 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 a Major Brand New. Major Brand New is the person who decides all the bounties. So he's hey, the Brand one New, who, why? He was the one. We don't know about the Devil Fruit bounties, but we do know for a lot that 200 million, that was Major Brand New. He goes, yeah, we know he has one of the most broken fruits in the verse. I see it right in this encyclopedia book right here. Uh, five billion. It's a two hundred million. Yeah, two hundred million. million. He's not a threat. He's not a threat. That, surely, he, surely he won't awaken, right? Yeah, like that's the craziest that's crazy. Pawn Star episode or whatever Pawn Shop. Like when they go in and they come in, like I'm gonna sell this for five million dollars. Eh, I only have a hundred. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> this is like a a bad strategy from the Marines, but yeah. I feel like the minute I would I learn somebody has a Devil Fruit or like a powerful one or one that can get bumped up in the future, like laws, I just give them a ridiculous bounty to get them off the market. Yeah, yeah. Like that's... I would just I would, I would like overbuy for that one. Yeah, 100%, 100%. And you could even just, like, deter pirates from eating devil fruits in the first place if you do that, too. Like, oh, if I eat this devil fruit, I'm going to be wanted for, like, 500 million base. Like, yeah. oh, maybe I shouldn't eat this because I'm not that powerful. I don't know. Or maybe that would make people, like, or maybe that would, like, entice people more. Because they're like, oh, they think of a $500 million threat. Yeah. So, I, I don't know. That's maybe a weird one. Marines, because I also thought about it like this. Like, the Marines might look at it like devil fruit users are less uh less problematic because like imprisoning a devil fruit user is significantly if not infinitely easier than someone without a devil fruit oh, example yeah. is healthy roger they had roger locked up but he doesn't have a devil fruit you can't tell me that that chain even in his sickness he couldn't just go boom break it right like it, it doesn't matter what it's made out of because it doesn't weaken him right versus if you had if roger ate a devil fruit and now you just coated him you every orifice in his body is filled up with like sea hannibal lecter now he can't do anything because it's sea stone and it's like yeah he, hockey triumphs everything he can overpower but it's still going to affect him like we've seen luffy be affected at a multitude of levels but like <laughs> mihawk like shanks roger you can't lock up these people because they're just they're just like, gonna rip out dude yeah, it like there's really no, matter. like if you couldn't kill Kaido, they trusted Roger on that last day a lot. <laughs> yeah, they, they and, really trusted Roger, like so much yeah. so that they didn't they didn't bring any like key players there. Like Garp wasn't there to our knowledge, you know. Like Akainu the wasn't action, there. The live action did one thing in 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 retconning it, and they did have Garp there. But like as far as we know, Garp Roger goes, hey. Hey, 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 quickly, nobody's listening. I have a child. You have to go save his ass. Garp's like, bro, what are you doing right now? And then, like, Garp actually leaves him. He's the only person reasonably who could take Roger in that moment. And Roger Not even Sengoku's like, there, right? Like, yeah, if you put Sengoku and Suda there, I'd be like, oh, okay, yeah, sure. Like, if Roger breaks out, he'll have to fight them. But it's like, nah, dude, if Roger breaks out, he has to fight, like, two bums with, like, swords, and that's it. 
And we know Shiki just escaped. And Shiki is a Devil Fruit user. And his way was cutting off his legs. And he still escaped. Like, I don't, I don't know what they were thinking. But it's just, it's comical to think about sometimes. It's like, damn, it's almost like they, one of the things that they should do when they admit you to Impel Down is they, if you're crazy strong and you don't have a Devil Fruit, they should feed you a Devil Fruit just to make it easier to lock you down. Oh, that could even be like an execution method. Feed them a worthless devil fruit and they just drown them. No, here. So I posted a video recently, uh, a short, where I was saying like the easiest thing, according to what we know, uh, multiple angles substantiated it. If you just feed a devil fruit user another devil fruit, they just explode. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That could be a great execution method. And not even that, you just give them a smile fruit if you don't want to like waste the, the resources. Exactly. And so then so then people are like, as, you know, like, oh, devil fruits are hard to find, blah, blah. I'm like, listen, if you're targeting any of the people on the list, the Kaido, Big Mom, Doflamingo, you are running into a devil fruit user. People were saying like, but devil fruits are so rare, whatever. I was like, you understand that if you're targeting these dudes, it's crazier to think that you don't run into a devil fruit user that you could kill or take or whatever and get their devil fruit or whatever and like caesar figured it out blackbeard whatever but the point is there's multitude of ways you could eat them like big mom yeah. you could big mom ate her a mother caramel boom so just lock up a devil fruit user force feed them i don't care what kind of series this becomes in the point is, is i'm right you feed a devil fruit user another devil fruit they explode now someone in the comment section went even more mad man it's like oh you can you can make a smoothie of two devil fruits and now everybody's dead like you could feed it to zoro and he would explode because he's getting two, two devil fruits and apparently that would be an insta kill too i'm like damn i feel like there is a teeth. chance though where Eating two devil fruits doesn't actually kill you. I I'm mm. so curious because we haven't seen that yet. Yeah. Like, I, I feel like by the end of the series, we will see that and we'll learn that maybe it was like a government cover up. Yeah. Like they just created that rumor because I'm kind of banking on that because I'm so curious to see what would happen. Like, because I, I, I what Jabra was like, oh, like if you eat another devil fruit, the devils are going to fight inside of you and you're going to die. It's yeah, like, okay, yeah. sure, sure, sure. But eh. I don't know. I'm with you on that. I and that's why I put the stipulation from what we know now. That's what the thing is. But like people were having the weirdest copium. They were like, oh, did Kaido has observation hockey? If you hid fruit inside of his sake, he would know. I'm like, what? Like, what are you talking about? Like, Big Mom also, like I brought up Big Mom. Big Mom saw a beige was like, oh, let's poison or put explosives. Like, if beige was really smart, he would put a devil fruit in the cake batter. And then boom, big did Big Mom care? No. Everyone was worried about what she would eat, right? Big Mom ate that shit. Where's the observation hockey there, right? Like there, it's not like observation hockey is is luffy literally ate a poisonous fish to the point that he almost died does observation hockey food. like sense objects I, I isn't it just living things it, it does sense objects but it doesn't like work like that to that extent yeah like like, like if i lose my car keys can i use my observation hockey to find them yeah it, it's like unless the car keys are have like a history with it and our black blade keys or something like that you know yeah. what i mean <laughs> like they're enma right but like um but but to your point of like it being government propaganda i i agree and um it's just interesting because it's like if that's the case damn that propaganda is really strong but like when blackbeard did it in front of the entire world did nobody like question it afterwards did no one yeah else? no if, if i saw blackbeard get two probably. devil fruits i'd almost like look at a devil fruit and i'd be like man should i eat two of these yeah like, it's like, like, the like, like would this work challenge. tide pad challenge had no appeal to doing it and apparently that spread what apparently allegedly spread like wildfire wildfire so if you're telling me two two devil fruits someone actually showed you in front of you that they have two of them it's not a gimmick no they literally used both of them in junction if you're like a marine and you have a and it's like wouldn't you try wouldn't we have more people just yeah no. like if i was dr vegapunk I, I would probably try it you know this is a question they need to ask vegapunk right like surely yeah. he's tested it see th these are the hard-hitting questions we need to ask vegapunk before he dies like hey yo brother <laughs> T tell me what's up with devil fruits why can't you recreate a logia you know like what's going on here with eating two of them 
Yeah. Uh, like, what's the history behind the Void Century? Like, he has this knowledge. He just hasn't told this yet, which is fine exactly. because, like, it's it's the classic Shonen thing where we, you know, we don't know until Oda wants us to know. But if we were in the series, I feel like we would go about things very differently. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or we're not the Straw Hat Pirates. Or not, like, Marines, we've talked about with the Buster Call. Like, you and yeah. I both would have used all those resources completely different. But the other part is... In uh, Eni's lobby, when uh, Jabra and um, and Lucci and uh, Bluno were talking about this, Bluno did say that the Grand Line, the Grand Line scholars have taught us how, like they already figured out how Devil Fruits confer their energy. In my mind, that's a vague reference to Vegapunk, given that yeah. at the end of that arc, you know, Kobe tells us like, yeah, Vegapunk is the one who figured out how to put devil fruits in, in, in the objects. Another thing that we haven't seen yet, another thing that we haven't figured out yet, we're supposed to apply that to Spandam's Funk Freed, right? Because that is in that A arc. sword that ate the elephant fruit. Right. And something that we still don't know. And we've talked about this, right? It's almost weirder because I feel like a lot of people think that Vegapunk's going to die by the end of this arc or that his capacity is going to be weakened, whatever. But, like, I don't know how we confer this information from Vegapunk after this, like, climax that we're getting where it's, like, Gear 5, uh, uh, Kizaru is here, Saint Agora Saint members here, Kiz, uh, Vegapunk just got stabbed. Is his dying words like, hey, by the way, this is how this is how Devil Fruits work. You can put a sword, elephant into the sword, blah, blah, blah. I did this, blah, blah, blah. Like, what is he going to do? Is his last words going to be an entire paragraph, like, like JJK telling us powers, right? Like, I don't know how Vegapunk tells us it in like a normal... Like JJK telling us powers. Yeah, that's <laughs> funny <laughs> like i just like if only if only you were there for the chapter when hikari's like domain expansion was explained uh -huh. which i don't know if you, if you even know that character but we had two pages full of di dialogue that i guarantee you 99 percent of the fan base just skipped it is the most ridiculous domain expansion i've ever heard of i only know about the 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 gambling one the roulette yeah yeah that, that is it yeah oh okay okay yeah yeah, yeah. i read that I, I read it and i was confused i was like what wait like i know i know enough about the demand it was like explaining a weird. slot machine in correlation to cursed energy and i was like yo that's that's wild and but it wasn't even just that it was like very intricate it's like not yeah. just like slots it's like it went into the equations that the slot machines use i was like wait what <laughs> and then yeah. it talked about what happens if you get like mismatched uh you know face cards or whatever i was like wow yeah. that's great that's great like like as an example for it like in the one piece thing it's like remember when kuma jumped up to punch saturn but then there was like entire dialogue in between him jumping and him hitting him it's like that it's like is vega punk gonna like put his tongue back in his mouth and all of a sudden he could speak normally and super fast right like i have no idea Oh, that's another thing. I can't wait to find out how Vegapunk speaks. Like, is he like, like in the voice in the anime, right? Like, mm. yeah, that'll yeah, be. Yeah, yeah, I, I see, I see. But um, um, on the Blackbeard stuff. Uh, <laughs> Going the, back to the main topic, Blackbeard. Let me tell you. Well, I was gonna uh, say that, like in any lobby, they kind of told us that Vegapunk does know all this stuff, right? Yeah, and that's another reason why I don't think Blackbeard is valuable to the end of it because it's like blackbeard apparently already knows how the get multiple devil fruits he seems like a like he gave all of his crew like the perfect devil fruits and i just feel like blackbeard has it figured out and in his own way and it's like if he shows up it's like what could what is he going to learn about what has he shown that he cares about he cares about devil fruits but he already figured out stuff that apparently vegapunk doesn't even know about which is weird. Yeah, Vegapunk hasn't fed anybody two devil fruits yet to our knowledge. So, yeah. Like, so. Well, what's going on with that? Yeah. And not, now like, I'm so curious. I, I didn't even think about that. But, like, how does Vegapunk also feed, uh, like, weapons oh, devil fruits? With his dying know. words. With his dying words, I really hope he tells <laughs> Usopp how to do it for a slingshot or something. I, I don't know, man. Like, <laughs> no. Spill I... the secrets, brother. I gotta, I gotta know. I'm curious, man. As much as I agree with you, like, I get it. I get it. Like, we need, we need Usopp. We need Frankie to get there, to get something for the love of God. But it's like, at this point, just let Elbaf bring Norse <laughs> mythology with the Mjolnir. Give them everything. Give them every goddamn mythical weapon, whatever. Yeah. Like, like, 
to, to f- like could you imagine the last words vega punk does it's like panel by panel he's like oh nami the, your weather stuff oh i've researched everything this is how i made the sky thing and it di- imparts like knowledge for every single straw hat including luffy because he knows what luffy is he knows more than probably everybody what luffy is and luffy doesn't even need that information and it's like i just i just don't know what we're gonna get out of it and i'm so curious because it's like for the longest time we've been waiting for vegapunk to the point and even in the sbs i think it's volume 99's sbs where oda said like huh vegapunk's gonna give us the answers about the devil fruits you just gotta wait or whatever i remember that yeah, yeah. He, he got us he got us good with that one and we're well how many chapters in like 30 40 we're yeah we're 40 chapters into egghead i feel like not that i know less about devil fruits obviously we learned more but it's like there are some basic questions like hey sir how did you make funk freed you know the guy <laughs> he has not explained anything <laughs> like, uh, can we get i don't give a shit about your hologram this the light gloves didn't do anything yeah the, the holograms haven't done anything the light gloves haven't done anything uh, your the AC is dome. cool. Laser no. dome. I mean, laser dome's doing stuff, but I, I agree. It's like, um, hey, there, there's other questions we have, man. You know, like, can can you please answer everything else? The satellites, the punk. We don't know about punk records. Oh my god, punk records. We don't know how they even connect to it yet. <laughs> like, we, we, yeah, yeah. We, Mega punk. He has like that Apple antenna, which is what we're assuming it is, right? Like, it's just like, oh, yeah, yeah it's the Apple but antenna. But they said that they link up once a day right they said that with yeah the like do they link up in pods like the six pads of pain or yeah. do they just like i don't know bluetooth it like we don't know really anything now we don't know it. what shaka looks like and apparently he's dead like we just uh, apparently he was just a robotic mask with skin on his neck because <laughs> oda decided to throw that out there yeah. after his death. like there's so much with shock is gone bro like un- unless we-, we just rebuild him yeah, we got so much with Vegapunk, and then we also didn't. And then we also find out that not only did we not get a lot, but also the Void Sentry is way beyond him. To the point where we have a paraplegic Iron Giant. <laughs> that, hey, that hey, hey, hey. He knows something about the Void Sentry <laughs> because he told Frankie and Sanji and them. And then Frankie was like, oh, how romantic, you know, like, oh, <laughs> like this is this is great. But for some reason, we didn't hear about it. It's like, brother, we're in the final song of Vegapunk tell us please yeah well i guess oda yeah. tell us please but you know it's this is it's interesting this is the issue with like all knowing characters and super smart characters it's like the like game of thrones had a similar thing too where they had this all knowing thing and then we we made one the characters all knowing which is someone someone proposed the idea and we've talked about this blackbeard getting either punk records or vega punk satellite or vega punk's devil fruit and i'm like that doesn't even it doesn't work like blackbeard he already is doing things that we don't know of and it's like like this whole special race thing with the buccaneers it's it's getting more and more substantiated in my mind that he is related to this thing but it's like then can we just get the the god why are, like at that point just have blackbeard come and tell us everything we don't even yeah. need vegapunk <laughs> to, to tell us because apparently Dude, that'd be kind of disrespectful man like vegapunk telling us more than or Blackbeard telling us more Devil Fruit lore than Blackbeard or than Vegapunk. I yeah, got like, those words really mixed up. Like we might find out that Blackbeard is yeah. clap clap D cheeks is like uh other child after Kuma's mom died or something like that. And then so like he's a celestial dragon too of clap D cheeks. Oh, and then the celestial dragon that shot clap wasn't shooting him because the Nika dance, it was because Clap had a kid with like a celestial dragon girl. And so like the the other guy came in to just take out his uh the 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 side guy, you know? That's like, that's some crazy headcanon <laughs> lore right there. It yeah, took me a second to like understand what you were saying because I forgot Kuma's dad was named Clap. Yeah. Which yeah, is such yeah. a cursed name. I don't know. Maybe there's like some <laughs> Japanese nuance in there that just makes the name Clap really cool. Yeah. But uh in, in English, like why is he named Clap? He got clapped. He could be clapping the hey. My head cannon substantiates the name even more. If he was literally clapping celestial cheeks, boom, we got the answer. And then that kid ended up being Blackbeard. Maybe the timeline makes sense. Like, is Blackbeard that much younger than Kuma? Right? I don't know. How old and is it's Kuma? It's kind of funny when you think about it too, because like 
you know, sometimes we'll say, oh, maybe Oda doesn't know like the like the American nuance or like the the the, the lingo with clap. But at the same time, it's like we're also saying Oda has like information on like a bajillion pirates, uh, ancient African lore with Joy Boy. You know, yeah. he, he's studying every religion's mythology, but he doesn't know what clap means nowadays. You know what I mean? Like it, it's, it's yeah. always funny whenever like it's, it's hard because Oda is just human. But at the same time, it's like, hmm. People are but, like, but he, well, he researches. Actually, I don't know. Oda's, I don't know. They're like, well, actually, Oda's Japanese. So all he knows is Japanese. It's like, how? How are we this far? We're like, there's an entire language or, 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 um, uh, uh, Oh, what is it called? God damn. Uh, katakana, which is literally a inset way for Japanese uh, uh, to convert foreign words into this. So the, it's like native to understand that, to translate to syllables. And then Oda has been using that. It's like, well, actually, Oda is just Japanese, so he knows no other languages. I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Kill me. But uh, Kuma is 47, and I'm pretty sure Blackbird is 39. So, like... When Kuma is at Marajua, it's not crazy to think that maybe, maybe... Maybe Clap did have to sleep with the Celestial. Yeah, and he had another kid. Huh, like, that'd be Like, crazy. one of the Celestial Dragons was like, yo, I want, I want Clap to come in my room tonight. Yeah. It would that... be like Clap's off day, like, I don't know. That would be interesting, man. Blackbeard would... lore is gonna be so... Wait, that would... I, I don't oh, know. No. So, so out of every character that we don't know, like, out of every character so far whose backstory we do not know of yet, who are you yeah. most excited for? Would it be Blackbeard? Would it be Dragon? Shanks? Uh, mm. Akainu? Like, like who? Who? I, I guess Emu could be uh, one you could throw in there too. You could throw in Loki if you wanted to. Like, like who are you most excited for? That's a tough one because, uh, like, I think excited and interesting is a separate thing, right? Like excited yeah. for, I would say, Kuma, Interested. right? Be yeah. uh, but prior to Kuma thing, I it was anticipating because Kuma was tied to all parts of the world. Every like job description he had, every title he had, corrupt, good, whatever. Like he was a cyborg human bear man with devil fruit that like fought Zoro, beat him. Like it was, it, 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 he had everything under the sun. So I was excited for that, right? Now, as far as interesting goes, like I didn't care for Kuma's backstory to be as interesting as it was. And as when I say interesting, like, uh, yes, I had a theory when we got the first Kuma memory bubble from uh, Bonnie that, oh, Kuma's backstory probably has God Valley. That makes it interesting to me, right? Um, and so it's, if we're to say, what am I most excited for? I think it is, I think it's easy for me to say that it, it would be Dragon. Um, I think okay. Dragon is, is going to be the most exciting for me because Dragon is a very similar character to Kuma in that regard, where he's a Rev character that was the child of Kuma. Garp, the hero of the Marines that defected at 14, created the world's government's like greatest enemy, whatever that means to you guys, because apparently he's been fighting Cypher Pull, and you guys know how we feel about Cypher Pull. And then on top of that, he's fighting the Holy Knights, and the, the Holy Knights commander, he could be really strong. He looks like Shanks, but I don't know how much the Shanks tax goes uh, for that. But hey, he scarred Whitebeard. He scarred Whitebeard, and that's Dragon's foe. But then also... Oda said that one of the things that he wants to write the most is Luffy's birth story. And so I, I think Dragon's backstory, understanding why he is this like convoluted character where like, I think, I think like this is as far as fiction goes, and I'm not in a bunch of communities, but I feel like the, I feel like Oda did this really crazy thing where somehow like and and you agree like dragon is an unlikable character you do not like him and i think a lot of people aside from not liking him are disappointed upset think that he's a fraud blah 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 and across the board even the people who think he's a fraud he's not even that like that big of a deal his title's fake he's not really the world everybody else is doing stuff he's like a kinyaman like oh I didn't mean to do all that, right? Like, that, whatever thing it is, there is, like, a minimum height of, to like, how powerful he is, how influential he's going to be. Like, people, even the biggest doubters can still see it. 
maybe they used to be believers. And I don't know of like another fictional story where like it was that far apart where it's like even dragons we're some of dragon's biggest believers that he's going to come out big and sh- uh, super strong but we also have hours of us slandering him to the ground and back and that to me is like i'm excited to know how oda bridges that gap and i think i see some of it uh because like my next two videos are going to be about dragon but like um yeah i think dragon is going to be the biggest one because um, he has to have background knowledge. He has a connection to Vega Punk, which not a lot of characters have. Um, and then he's also like of the few characters that have like a personal spite with a Kainu. It seems like there is some personal history with a Kainu, the f- current fleet admiral, one of the strongest characters. Like Dragon is tied to the strongest characters in the series, and we don't know how. So I'm excited for that. I'm super excited. And yeah. I would say it, it's going to interest me as well. But um, it, and and to just add, like, as far as interesting things go, I think Blackbeards is going to be the most interesting thing. I don't know if I'll be most excited, but I think Blackbeards is going to be the one that, like, from God Valley to the Void Sentry to the Buccaneers to Emu, Celestial Dragons, I think that he's going to be, like, the one that's, like, the keystone to all these somehow and I don't know yeah. how, and that's going to be really crazy, like, seeing how Oda does that. But, but yeah, I'm definitely excited for Dragon. Definitely For me, for I, I think I'm most interested in, uh, I, I guess I'd be in the same boat, yeah? Mm-hmm. I'd say Blackbeard. Blackbeard would be my pick, but I'm most excited for Akainu, though. Because yeah. I feel like his backstory isn't going to be anything super crazy, but mm-hmm. I feel like uh, it's going to be very simple, and I think I'll like that a lot. Yeah, I, I just yeah. want to see like where his justice lies. What drove him to join the Marines? Wh- why is he such a hard ass? Because mm-hmm. I feel like he has good reasons, and people just try to dismiss that. But it's like at the end of the, at the end of the day, he is fighting for justice or whatever he believes in. So I'm I'm curious to see what led him to this point. Like, did he suffer a betrayal in the past? Did he deal with insubordination in the past that costed a life? Like, I, I'm really curious. And like, what was the relationship with Drag? Because like, it all ties in. So yeah, like yeah, I am yeah. like I think. For me, it's a Kainu and Blackbeard. I, I, think, I put them on the pedestal. I think for I would, most interesting back backstories. Yeah, I would raise a Kainu on not. I think Oda's purposely like yes, like obviously that everybody has a backstory in One Piece. Everyone's gonna have Oda does a great job with that. I think Oda's purposely not trying to make it exciting and create an expectation, but the interest factor is through the roof. And to 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 put it in context, I think. Uh, that a Kainu, like you said, but also it's definitely going to be way more expansive than this. I feel like it is going to be probably of the Admirals one of the most in depth ones. I feel like a Kainu is going to get like a senior pink treatment where it's like, like out of nowhere, we're just like, wait, what? Holy, oh my God. Like, it's, even the word hard boiled fits with like a Kainu down to the. Like, his power where it's like we're gonna see some crazy thing like like every tragedy no like he had a kid his kid was taken away but uh, like like uh what well, if uh hibari looks like his daughter or whatever and he's like ah oh, this is not my kid he's gonna have some crazy like thing i feel like and 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 it's going to be really interesting. I think I'm, I'm going to end up... I think everybody's going to end up liking it. That's a hard statement, but that's what I meant by, like, senior pink treatment. I think Oda is going to... is really going to cook with magma on, on Akainu. Yeah, I'm excited for Akainu. Yeah, yeah. I want to see how many people, like, end up joining the Akainu bandwagon afterwards. Not not for, like, you know, top one of the verse. I feel like that's kind of, like, a, a weird one because it's, it's very subjective on how people view the series. But as, yeah. as far as, like, how... um. Like how many people like a Kainu base level? I feel like is gonna it's they're they're gonna switch up once we get that backstory. Yeah, I feel like people can't understand. Like they can't like that's the thing. It's like like yeah, I may not like a Kainu as like my favorite character, but that's also we don't know a lot. And that not knowing a lot, it's like can people not understand? how a, someone ends up in a kind of vision. I think it's fairly reasonable. Like there's so many things you could write in, even in the story contextually, that's like, oh yeah, like if a kind of had this backstory, makes sense that he's like this. You don't even need a crazier backstory than that. Yeah. 
And I feel like oh, it's gonna give us like one that's like, bro, like if you don't understand him after that, I think you'd be in the minority. I think a lot of people are gonna come around at least to understanding him. I like um, to imagine at least like most people have some sort of like family member that had a, has like a military back background. Mm -hmm. And I feel like Akainu is just the perfect example of that. Like he's just a, he's just a guy. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it, but I, I respect it. But hey, we're gonna go ahead and end the video here. Oh, uh, we yeah. passed the two hour mark. That's pretty cool. Hey, we're at two minutes or two two minutes two hours. Two minutes in. <laughs> we did it, Could guys. Imagine speeding this up just to be two minutes, and then it's like yeah. <laughs> but uh, we're at two hours this and fourteen. Audio vomit. Oh. So happy Valentine's Day, Sai. Hey, we'll happy Valentine's before, Day, Bar. Um, but but wish you you guys in the uh, chat, you know, love yourself if you have someone else. Just but... like last week, I might like put the beginning of the clip at the very end so we can get yeah. straight to One Piece. And then, well, it's it's like a catfish, right? We yeah. get you with One Piece, and then at the very end, you, you get like all the background talk and what banter. So. With? We started with like leaks. Uh, we talked a little bit about the OPLA. No, 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 like very beginning, very beginning. Uh, Apple Vision Pro. Oh, 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 oh. Cause you know how crazy it'd be? I saw the comments, people were like, no, you cut out the beginning. You, you censored it. I cut it. out the and beginning, then... but it's at the very end. I saw you tried out the Apple Vision Pro on Twitter. Yeah. How do you like it? Did you feel like, like a loser? A um, no, it's actually, cause, um, for people who um, haven't kept up, like I'm at my friend's place, staying with them for a little bit. Because you have so, cancer. Th yes, that is that is the the case. I'm also like house sitting. They have a cat. Their cat was just like sitting with me working all last Please night. Please don't kill was, the cat. No, nah, the cat. The cat's a nice cat. Nice cat. Um, she uh yeah, very cuddly. Um, what was it? Was it? Yeah, yeah. So they got the Apple Vision Pros, and they were mind blown when we we tried the demo obviously the demo is a little bit like they try to put their best f like put face forward. forward yeah exactly um and they don't show you the like highest potential that you could use it for but they also like the reason why they do that is because some of that stuff has like soft like like you will start noticing like oh I, I like i wish this was possible and it is possible like there was a few programs that that the way it worked it was like wait if it works here why doesn't it work here and like i want this function across the board and that's ultimately like the only negative thing that i i see is this is like if you're going to get this or if you're interested in it or you see like like most of the chrism that i've seen it's like yo it's it's the first mover like system it's like it's like the first iphone in my opinion in, in that regard like yes there have been other versions of vr ar and i've tried a lot of those but this one is kind of like insane and so like for example okay. my, my friend he he went out he was doing yard work while watching Endgame, he had the he had the sun blocked out because he had IMAX 3D blocking this like so like he with was getting Apple Vision Pro, yeah, with the Apple Vision Pro raking and whatever, and he went to the coffee shop, came back. His wife was mad. He was just like, "Yo, you took like you're gonna get robbed." And he's a big dude, but also it's like uh, what we realized it. And I don't know if people know this. It, it's the thing is so anti theft. It's kind of crazy. Is it like? Yeah, it's so it like honestly, it's so anti theft. It's a problem, and it's a problem that people are pissed. Wait, okay, at wait, 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 wait. How is it anti theft? Can, so, can you describe that real quick before we get into it? Yeah. So, so when you wear the Apple Vision Pro, so one really cool thing is that um, it adjusts your eyesight. So, like you can, um, for example, you can get inserts for if you wear gla glasses. It. It, they they can check your glasses at the Apple Store, measure the lens, put it into the thing. So now, oh. if someone else wears it, they'd have to take off the lens. That's one thing. But then it calibrates to your eyes. So, one of my friends, she has really really bad eyesight, and she was just like, <laughs> she oh, is yeah. a blind. <laughs> she no no, I'm not even joking, bro. She wears glasses and like she looks like Arthur, like like thick ass, like super insane glasses. And yeah, and, that's um, kind of cool. And so she, uh, you know, when she used the demo at Had the a store, voice crack, it was so cool. 
What, what, oh, you're the voice I, I said I, I had a voice crack. It was so cool. Yeah. I was like, ooh, th th thick glasses? Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so at the demo, so this is a good, like, important thing is that when they calibrate it there, it's like perfected because the lighting yeah. is perfect. Everything is perfect, right? When she brought it home, it wasn't perfected. And for her, it was slightly blurry, which like we could have, we fixed a little bit later. But when we put on her thing, that shit was not good. Like that shit gave all of us a headache. And then all we had to do is adjust it to our eyesight. So if it's not adjusted to your eyesight, you have issues. Also, it scans your hands. So if it doesn't sense your hands, then it won't, you, you can't use the gestures that easily. So like you can do stuff, but then on front of it, there's a passcode thing too. So like you'd have to like, if you can't use the, the thing, you'd have to like, manually touch and go through the the codes but there's no yeah. way to connect your apple vision pros to a computer which is how a lot of people end up hacking like phones and whatever you plug in a usb device you plug in something like that and it uses like a, a like various versions of cracking a password you can't do that with the apple vision pro you can't plug it into a computer and you can't bypass a lot of the security and then also there's some kind of like excessive anti-tamper thing right now where <laughs> it's like I said, it's an actual issue. If you get the password wrong and you get locked out, you have to take it to the Apple store. They don't, there's no way for you at home huh. to do anything about that, even if it's your own thing. And it's super excessive. Um, and then on top of that, there's another thing that like, if it, if it senses some kind of like, again, tampering, it blacks out the thing and then there's a error code on the front and then you have to bring it to the apple store and so like for many reasons like when i tried it on and i had to like recalibrate it and they didn't set it to guest mode it was like so difficult to use like it almost i'm not saying that it's impossible i'm just saying like it's not it's as a easy. hassle to steal and use is what you're saying yeah yeah like yeah okay. i'm sure someone if if i saw like like a very easy target right like some some like if i if i needed for like a four guy like with no arms uh in a wheelchair no friends around him with the apple vision pro you you think that he would be an easy target right and and, and uh and you'd be deterred and if someone was down on the, their luck and and they resorted to villain villain crime a life of crime yeah, I could see them trying to get it and then reselling it, but it's not the same thing as stealing an iPhone. It's so different. It's like the fact that you can't even plug it into any device. But, but here's the like thing. Crazy. I I feel like uh not a lot of people know that information that you just said like how 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 much of a hassle it is to use the Apple Vision Pro if it if you don't own it. Yeah. I feel like yeah. since people don't know that, they might That's... just actively steal it anyways, you know? yeah I, without even I, that, knowing that because i don't know if i see somebody just like walking around the sidewalk I, i'm not gonna steal it right you know i'll leave yeah, that to yeah. somebody else but i feel like they would just be like an easy target like people would just go after it i think like it, it is an interesting thing because like when people think of like theft and and like that kind of thing usually it's not like it, it's it's not like I would imagine if someone gave you a shakedown, give me your wallet, give me your thing, blah, blah, they would take everything, right? That yeah. Then they would take your Apple. They wouldn't rob you blind and leave you that full vision pros. But it's not the same thing as like, you know, when when people who steal cars or, or, or lift cars and stuff like that, they target the the easy stuff to steal, right? The stuff without the security stuff, the stuff that's yeah. easy to resell, right? In that regard, they're targeting something and they're stealing that, right? I'm saying that the Apple Vision Pro for like people who steal stuff on the regular, that's not like the best thing that they could steal over a laptop, over a phone, over anything else. They could easily steal a phone, easily uh, fix it up. That's so much easier. Whereas, yeah, if you're gonna get robbed blind, you're gonna get robbed blind. There's no stopping that. Whatever you have on your person, they're gonna take. And if it, yeah. then they're not gonna stop at whatever's on your face right now, right? So I can't wait to see like a, like a headline next week, like Apple Vision Pros is the most stolen Apple product in mankind. But but all the thieves don't know how to use it though. That'd be hilarious. Yeah. And the and the other part of it is it's actually really fragile. Like it like uh, I I say that with a grain of salt, right? It's very sturdy, very durable, but the front is a curved glass thing with many cameras in the yeah, side. Yeah, you look like Ready Player One. Yeah, yeah. It, I mean, it's just my logo essentially, right? That's a huge reason why I'm getting it. But like also 
the parts on it there's like fabric and whatever they're magnetically put together so if you like mishandle and you try to rip it off something I, like i you're probably gonna crack the screen you're probably gonna fuck it up like it, so in that wait, regard it, what do you, you think it's worth 3500 then i think so i i do okay. think so but it's obviously not like a like it's not when i say it's worth it it's worth it for people who who know what they're doing that's what i mean like if you it, like versus like yeah a smartphone is generally valuable to everybody right i think yeah. that everybody can find value in the vision pro but for someone like me i have one two three monitors right i always have like something playing in the background i'm always like i'm i mean you're careers. always tapped into the the par vision exactly so like for me now the reason why i'm gonna get it is because if i travel I can, I, I don't have to bring my entire setup. I can jump a lot of my stuff. And that's, that's another thing, uh, like with the MacBook or something, right? What's really cool is that what it does, because it's a camera that shows you the world and it's really accurate, like almost insane, like it, like uncanny doesn't fit it because it's like, it's pat, it's like 99%, like, like it feels real. And but you're looking at a camera or, or a lens or, or not a lens, a screen that's taken by uh, a bunch of cameras. And when you're looking at a computer screen or your phone screen, replaying this what's on that screen isn't the efficient thing to do. So what they do is they can turn it off like on the yeah. VR thing and you can pop the screen out and make it super big. And so if I want to use a laptop, I could use it as if it has a detached monitor on the vision on the vision pro it's really 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 interesting and so far like i watched i watched endgame i put up my youtube videos i was like scrolling through uh uh, t uh so, some some uh tcb op scans uh twitter some some of that stuff and i was doing all of it i was doing all of it and i like so how scared, scared you were to say those words like it's voldemort or something it, i mean like, hey, hesitated hey listen 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 i when, when the feds are involved you know me me i'm just a i'm just a regular dude you and you and me we're not trying to fight the fight the big fight you know well i guess this brings us to the next topic before we hop into one piece but uh the leakers got arrested bro in japan yeah that's hilarious yeah they couldn't see the vision that was crazy did you see like the the drama behind it too i mean that... isn't the whole thing drama well yeah but like the <laughs> well what released the other day like what? it turns out a translator is uh snitched on them. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I saw that. I saw that. Wait, but like we don't know like who the translator's affiliation or do we? Because I saw someone say it was like scan Pia affiliation, but I have no idea. I mean idea I don't think it is, considering they also deleted their stuff. Um, yeah. it could just be a rogue uh, translator that worked for the teams at one point. That's what I'm saying. So, like, I, my first reaction to all of this, like, when it first dropped, my first tweet was, like, at Netflix, yo, you should make a documentary about this. Like, it's such yeah, a weird... you guys gotta weird, talk about this. Yeah, it's such a weird niche problem. And then, like, for people in the community, it's such a big thing. But, like, if you were realistically, like, a real person, if I just told my friends who, who have, like, normie lives, right, they're like, what? What? What, why is this such a big deal you know what i mean it's like yeah. it's like of all the news that's going on and then like if you're in our twitter space it's like oh my god the feds they got them oh my god it was a sting operation like it's just so crazy and i feel like those are the type of things that go they'll go wild as a documentary like the things that you never like really think about but it's kind of wild because at, on one side it's like a big deal right but then functionally it's not because it doesn't solve any of the problem like them arresting these dudes was just like a big middle finger to those dudes because the issue is it's like what it's like is like watching a, a mob like like a crowd of everybody you know everybody you see there they're all they're all thieving they're all they all they're carrying apple vision pros and running out the store and you just picked out two people and you know that there's a whole like hundreds of them you just picked out two and you're just like yep you're going to jail for life buddy i don't even know if they're going for jail for life but like yeah it, it, they know that there's 98 others there they just don't 
Like, they're like, oh, it's too, man, eh, whatever. <laughs> like, it's so weird. It's so weird. But it's a whole it thing. Weird. And then, like, plus, leaks are still happening. You know, some people have this weird perception where, like, right when this happened, they're like, oh, spoilers are gone forever. Yeah, I was so confused. I was like, what? There's just two they're people? They're just delayed by one day. Yeah, like, do, like you and, guys and those, realize those, We're talking about the Raws, too. Like, we're not even talking about the tech spoilers at all. Yeah, there's, like, an Arabic team. There's a Chinese team. There's an Indian team. There's teams in e French team. There's a team in every goddamn country. And Who it, knows where they're getting their shit from, right? And to, like, uh, to, to back that up, you know, it's not, like, a baseless claim. JJK got leaked this morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have, I like, the JJK it. chapter. I mean, like, it, it it is what it is. Like, leaks aren't going to stop. Like, even if those leakers are gone, like, there, there's going to be more leakers in the future. And it, if, it, like, not just right now. TCB even tweeted, like, oh, JJK is coming soon. My hero. And Which is funny. So I, so I <laughs> tweeted the day of, yeah. that, like, this news dropped. Because I said, hey, um, you know, like, the leakers got caught, blah, blah, blah. But I said, tech spoilers and leaks will still be a thing. And then TCB replied to me. And then they're like, oh, you heard wrong. They're not going to huh? be a thing anymore. And then I deleted my tweet because I'm not trying to beef with TCB. Like, I feel like it's such a pointless thing. Like, oh, yeah. it's like a he, he said, she said. Because in my mind, it's like, okay, so TCB thinks that no more spoilers will be a thing. So yeah. I was like, yeah, I'll just delete it. I don't, I don't like care. Like I said, like, it's, it's whatever. But the very next day, like, it got confirmed that spoilers are still a thing. And then plus we got JJK leaks and MHA leaks. And it's like, all right, cool. Like, whatever you know like i don't know who's running that tcb twitter account but okay yeah 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 i mean it's probably not uh the 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 representative the head. yeah yeah it's not like a it's not a it's not like a fortune 500 company where like the social yeah. media person's like uh, like on on a payroll that that signed an nda type thing you know like yeah, when i got that response from tcb one i didn't expect it because they don't follow me but two i was just like mm, sure buddy gotcha yeah mm, okay yeah no yeah, spoilers are gone all right thank you tcb yeah i'm not uh, even in the spoilers as if space. they're like leakers or something like that but just like functionally like we've talked about this every media hat like game grand yeah. theft auto like everything has spoilers and it's like like there's no way to stop it all yeah and it's incredibly hard and i'm not saying anything about the one piece situation but it's even harder when it's an internal situation right grand theft auto is a great example of that like some some execs kid decided to flex right and then he did, did that or was that there was like a few other instances where like the uh what was that game B bethesda or whatever they had like a a, ver a version of like that where like someone hacked it but then also somebody leaked it too something like that but um it'll it, it's always gonna exist but then the one piece situation it's built in to to the way they distribute it it doesn't take a rocket scientist to see it and that's what tells me like yo they know like whoever's i don't know who has the hierarchy in distribution I'm pretty sure it's shown in jump but like they know what their that their system is flawed they know they literally in the arrest reports their response to like the police like they were saying like uh like we just hope that people you know don't uh like this is a warning to spoilers and and we just we hope that store owners decide to drop it on the day of because they know that there is a way yeah. for them to drop it earlier. Like if they couldn't do that, you wouldn't need to say that, but you allow them to. And and again, as 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 funny as that we have audio problems in 2024, it's crazy that we're like that that these like multi, I don't know, I would imagine that they have billions, but like yeah, let's yeah, just yeah. Like, like a billion dollar company can't figure it out in 2024 it's like bro we have solutions now like you're in an island country where everybody's technologically advanced and like you have gas stations at every corner like you can figure it out with internally at the minimum right for the leaks to happen within japan is even wilder and i remember like uh glr he tweeted or i i forget what um where it was but i don't, i don't, don't think he'd care but like he's just like yo if the leakers if like if like whoever op scans tcb whatever was 
working within Japan, knowing that if they just did the same thing and paid someone to leak it to them, they wouldn't go to jail if they were just like one country next door, right? Japan isn't like going over. Oh, and you know what's even funnier? I don't know if anybody tweeted this, but it was the Kumamoto police which i don't know if people know this that's oda's hometown you know how yeah. much the audacity to be in oda's hometown leaking his shit like at that point you're in like yonko territory you're in the emperor's realm right like oda's pretty set, crazy set up gold statues around the thing to fund the state and it's like the police are extra probably like they're his personal bodyguards probably there right like i don't know because he funds like the he, the, the all the recovery from like every natural disaster at this point but oh my god that whole story was just so funny through yeah it's, through. it's interesting for sure and then they yeah. had like OP scans uh, and TCB like up on the, the big screen in the J Japanese news segment too. Oh my God. That was crazy too. <laughs> when that happened, I like that made it even funnier. And I, I want to say like, obviously feel bad for the people who got arrested. Oh yeah, but 100%. It, like, 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 it goes without saying. Like, like it's, yeah, obviously they got into it. They knew they were doing illegal stuff, right? So like that, that side of it. But it's all, for me, it's just sad because it's like, they're just they're like no offense to them but they're just they're not special pirates they're not like leaking nuclear codes they're like doing what most of like anime community has been doing for like the last 30 years and they they're arrested and plenty of other people have been arrested too so it, it sucks they yeah they they knew what was coming but like uh, you know, I, I, I'm pretty sure this is a thing too. Crunchyroll used to be a pirating website, right? Like, and then they became legitimate and got all the licensing later on. So it's like, there, there's a whole world around this, but, um, yo, when they put that, that shit on the big screen, they're like, look at what, look at the, they held, they did it like as a drug, like a drug bust, bro. They're like, we got 25 kilos of cocaine, weed, uh, 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 ketamine and all this other shit. And then it's just, it's just, OP. yeah, it really did look like a drug bust here in America. Right. Cause yeah. I, I'm just imagining like they, they pull up the police car, they put all the cocaine and the drugs up on the, the hood. They did the same thing, but for the manga leaks, which is hilarious. And, and, and like the other part of it too, and I was thinking about this, like Japanese readers read this, the leaks, right? The spoilers. Yeah. And like, okay. So now Japan, we know a lot of people read the manga, like a lot, a lot. Like it, it's, it's like a, like you're almost weird if you don't end up like knowing about, if you don't know Luffy and you're like Japanese, that's probably weirder to be in there, right? Like in that country, but you're probably like a time traveler if you don't know Luffy in Japan. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like it, it, it it's almost impossible. Now, on top of that, you're in Kumamoto, <laughs> which is Oda's hometown. And then like you're the police and you're investigating like One Piece anime leaks. Like I'm sure they know like the the watermarks they probably use the websites too like right like i feel like the the people who busted them might be fairly knowledgeable like in a similar way they know like oh yeah on reddit it drops like rion leaks the thing or whatever like <laughs> i feel like they know all of that they're one of us like i'm sure of it it would be weirder if they weren't right maybe uh... <laughs> yeah like, I'm just thinking like it was some like like it was back to back weeks of like Sanji slander and the the head investigators like a Sanji fan he's like, he's like oh, tired no. of it yeah tired we're gonna put an end to this now it's like it's like no more Sanji at... slander I, I've I've had enough <laughs> oh man the amount of like funny things that an easy way head. to like just solve this like the whole leak problem you just have the digital version come out early and then just release the physical a week later yeah. Which is like, like, that's that's like the easiest solution. Yeah, that makes so much more sense. And then and then obviously, and I think they said it somewhere in between it where the digital versions have a watermark on it. Like they 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 already have that system there. It's yeah. just like they, for whatever reason, want the physical copies out there. Which you know, if we want to go play hardball, damn, Japan is like really really pro murdering trees they're very anti amazon rainforest like they, they just get, like the physical media you know 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. They to the point where they they'll arrest people for leaking it instead of just you know doing the opposite and solving the full problem. It's like it's like patching or a or even do both. Faucet. Yeah, do both. I don't know, but like it's like patching a leaky faucet, but then there's like a sewer, like just like a straight gushing right next to you. And you're like, yep, fixed it. The, yeah, the and then they're like, hey, please, guys, uh, stop, uh, stop leaking our stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And <laughs> and I, I love the follow up message. Just hey, uh, please, uh, store owners, don't don't do that anymore. I'm begging yeah. you. As they stare, like the thing is, they probably know, right? Like, I forget yeah, what it know. was. Like Pew, I think Pew uh, tweeted something like, uh, it, "Oh, it was the translator thing that you're talking about." Like once the translator snitched, then they went into difficult. Like it, it, the, I forget what Pew said, but it was something along the lines of like, "Oh, they worked day and night to find these." Cr I was like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> like it's not that hard. <laughs> like I don't know. At that point, just hack the like, like don't they? Can't they just hack the people? It's not like they're using insane. I'm sure maybe they are using insane VPNs and like it's completely unhackable, but I doubt it. The amount of times OP scans website has gone down in like the like last few months, I'm sure they have like can't the Japanese police just like in the movies and then figure out whose IP address it is and just go there? Like it shouldn't be this hard. It shouldn't be that hard. That's the other yeah. part of it. They're wasting manpower on on it too. It's like sure, sure. Yeah, it's fine. It's a it's an interesting scenario. But on another note, though, I might leave the spoiler game for a little bit. But it, it's not related mm. to that, though. It, it's it's more so related to my YouTube problems. Yeah, yeah. Coincidental timing. Yeah. But, uh, uh, also, that's why like, I didn't make a video because I was like, shit. Like, if I make a video, people are gonna think this is the reason why. So it's like, uh, I'll I'll wait. I'll wait. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you do it or don't, they're still gonna be like, like. So some people are going to be like, wait, why did Sai stop posting spoilers? And then it's like, well, you know, you saw what happened. <laughs> you saw what happened on the news, didn't you? <laughs> and then like, like you're just, they, nobody decides to like look at your thing where you say like, nope, that's not why guys. Like I just, you know, YouTube hasn't paid me and it's just stressful and, you know, I have to make three accounts. Stuff. Yeah. Like, <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's an interesting I'm tired uh, of it, bro. I, I'm I'm tired of making more and more accounts. So I'm gonna leave spoilers for a while, just kind of focus on discussion content and uh stuff like that. Yeah, which I think people really like um of you, but also I think one of the things that people came to your spoiler content too is is like it saved them the time and the energy of like looking and finding the real spoilers and then yeah. and then you uh providing like a broad scope of like all the things that are related to to said spoilers and then people creating discussions on that and so like you know just like the translators I'm destroying your home guys just like your, the your regularly scheduled monday and tuesday videos are gone well you're still gonna have regular scheduled videos. they just won't be spoiler videos yeah uh, and then for spoilers um i might not quit entirely i might just put it on patreon for now since that's like the one place i can do it but yeah. it, I, I do feel weird like putting paywall. it behind that paywall mm -hmm. but it's like if that's if that's like the only way i can like do it i mean i have no choice yeah yeah and then yeah. the other rumors are gonna start where it's like Oh, sides going officials. So that means he's gonna be in the live action. Oh shit, he's gonna be Mr. Three. Like I would not. <laughs> Yo. Honestly, if the live action reached out to me and like, hey side, we want you here, I yeah, I'd have to go through a lot of hoops to like want to do it. Would you okay, okay. Uh, all that conversation aside, I'm just gonna ignore that. Would you wanna be crocodile? No. No? What character what, in this? I like, I'm a little bit too scrawny to be Crocodile. I feel like that wouldn't fit. I'd consider that like another bad Netflix casting, so I wouldn't want to like contribute Crocodile to that. honestly isn't that yoked. His arms and legs are kind of He's not like... that yoked, but he doesn't look like me. You know what I mean? Oh, like, I don't know what star. character... I don't know what character in One Piece I would play. This, uh, in, in like, you know, the... I'd probably be like a fodder character. Season 2, like of what they would cover all the way to Alabama. Would you want to be Koza? No. Nah. Because I don't think I'd want to act in the live action. Oh, oh, would you want to? Okay, me. Okay, okay, okay. It's a bundle deal. They get both of us. And guess what group? Guess what group we would be? 
We'd, uh, uh, I'll give you a hint. We'd have less than 10 seconds of screen time. <laughs> what, the Kung Fu Dugons? Oh, shit, that's a good one. <laughs> Could you imagine me and you just... <laughs> wait, wait, no. who? Wait, who, who'd you have in the, mind? The, uh, the, the oh, royal... Oh, isn't there yet. The royal guard that takes the final fuel or whatever. Like, oh, just... the fatal fuel people? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they would just take it and then we just die on the screen. <laughs> That'd be funny, but I, I don't know, Par. I'm, I'm gonna squash the dream. I don't think I would do it. Wait, why? Because like you'd be worried about like your reputation as a human being to like a little bit, yeah. Like I have, I have pride, you know. Like I, I don't know if I'd want to <laughs> act in the the One Piece live action. No offense for for tens. Hey, as far as I mean, we talked a little bit about the Avatar one, right? I would say that the yeah. One Piece live action already is like doing it a little bit better oh yeah, I yeah mean, it's, it's not like bad i i just i wasn't the biggest fan of the opla i thought it was okay like it's passable yeah. but it's not like yeah. a, a 10 out of 10 project that i would want to be a part of okay like but... if, if i was a part of like the writer's board then maybe like i, uh -huh. I would want to do things behind the scene and like kind of yeah. change the direction of like what's happening but as far as acting in it if, if i just have to act based on what they're giving me like nah i'm good i'm good well, I don't want to like get some cringy like you know lines or dialogue or well that's like, scenes. what's made the One Piece live action a lot more successful in my opinion than like other endeavors and that's a future writing statement and it's because everybody on set actor. from fodder whatever or they were all One Piece fans. And so they actually did like take if there was like some character change and it was that person in that character, they actually did like take into consideration like, oh yeah, like that this makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. But here's here's the reason, Sai. And we talked about this and I don't think this will change your mind. Oda was on set. Would you want to become no. fodder just for 10 seconds just no. to like I'm not like to... that super fanboy like th th that's another thing too yeah. like you know I love One Piece I love Oda and but I'm I, I'm not gonna go like out of my way to meet him mm -hmm. like I'm just like a casual person at the end of the day so like, I, I'm good but so that means you're like you're not so content pilled because I'm not even talking about the no. super fan thing like I'm thinking like like Ludwig on YouTube, who just like makes content out of everything. And like, I wish I wish I could do that. And I, I hope I can evolve into being that kind of content creator one day. But yeah. for now, I'm just like just a regular dude. Yeah, yeah. I've been I've been thinking about that recently. How I'm like, like, <clears throat> like my wife, friends, people. They're like, oh yeah, like like content creation makes sense for you. Like a, a lot of people who know me is like, yeah. This, what you do, how you are, it makes sense. And I just thought about it, like, you know, as far as the spectrum goes, there's a lot of content pill brain, like crazy people. And I can understand it. I can see it. Like as soon as someone does, I'm like, oh, I get it. I understand it. Like, I think yeah. both of us can do that. But then I'm also like, eh, it's not, I don't really care. <laughs> like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> I, I, I just been thinking about that recently, especially with like my own stuff. I'm like, Oh man, I could do all this, all this. Like sometimes I watch Brago when he streams, and I this is like how I see that he's a uh, like a league above, um, like leagues, leagues above uh, thing. Like when he receives information, even if it's not related, he's he's able to like he's able to like oh this would be really good. Like dividing this up, this up, this up, boom. And like we've had conversations. I'm like wow, that's like. I could see that I could do that, but then he also like actually does it and goes through and gets like motivated to do it. And I'm like, damn, like I can't do that. Like I don't know if I'm I could do that yet. But I wonder how many people will join the live action like casting wise. No, because they know that Oda's gonna be on set. That was something I, I was feel like a about. lot of people. Yeah, I was like, oh, but uh, no. one one thing about that too is like I feel like even if you have the best of intentions, it doesn't equal a good product. Like, mm. I know you said, like, oh, like, everybody on the OPLA, like, they're big fans of One Piece, and it's like, oh, mm. that's great. But, I mean, like, it doesn't exactly equal or necessitate a great product yeah. at the end of the day. Like, you know, the the, the thoughts are there, but, yeah. you know, like, I, yeah. I don't know if that exactly means anything. Yeah, I, I think, like, and, and I had a conversation or... The, the, like received a lot of conversation via my friends who a lot of their friends uh watch live action and or are both like one piece fans and live action things so like normies casual one piece fans and like normies into live action thing and a lot of them are like you know uh 
they uh, there was like this thing they were saying like oh man the one piece live action success is making it so that there's more uh endeavors in live action space and that's like an overall bad thing right and like i'm just like like you can't blame one good product for a bunch of shit like, that's yeah saying, i like, wouldn't i wouldn't blame it yeah yeah that's like that's where i'm like okay you can't you can't put that on the one piece thing and there's a lot of people who say that right and then for me i think i have more capacity to um uh, 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 l allow and like the idea that like no first products is ever going to be good, right? Like no first uh, try, no for no matter how much you love something, no matter how much you do something. Season one, first season, first your first video on YouTube, your first Apple Vision Pro VR goggle, your first iPhone, all those are going to be garbage compared to the seventh season or something like that and if you get to that seventh season well it's to me it's like damn it's unfathomable how cool it could be and it's like we do have examples of you know fictional uh hero like you know like like superhero like marvel dc whatever i'm not saying like dc is the the uh, the epitome of greatness but they do do a lot of visual stuff in an interesting way i think that like marvel does it better but like there are good things here and there and we would never get there we'll never get there in this space if we shut it down on on the first one and the the you know the problem is it's like you know, um, people want to shut down potential just because they don't want to see something. And it's like, you don't have to view it. Don't view it. If anything, it's better if you don't view it. Don't support it. Like, even adding negativity to it makes it bigger, makes it more, more, uh, uh, yeah. uh, adds more bloat to it. Just ignore it. Don't add to something that you don't want to support. Your negativity adds to it, especially in the space of the internet, because more people are going to talk about it. And that's the same thing with like, uh, you know, I was talking, somebody was uh, another one of my friends, not content creator, very uh, uh, far from the space. I was explaining to them like drama stuff like happening and like, damn, that person should be canceled. And I'm like, I was like, so like, like, I was like, not, not like I was like, what do you want me to do about it? Right. It was more so like, oh, man, you should cancel person. I was like, like, it's not that easy. Like everybody who gets canceled gets bigger. You add more drama to somebody. Unfortunately, that adds to their platform that adds to everything. And so like you can't negativity, adding your negativity, adding your time because negativity takes time um make something more get more traction because then the other side of it is people want to prove you wrong right even it and being positive people want to prove you wrong so being negative people want to prove you wrong that's the, that's the thing that people don't see you see it on twitter all the time it's like oh my god why is twitter so toxic and it's like because like everybody's trying to get the last word in or prove each other wrong or prove each other right and like the more radical you are the more conversation you're going to create which is why people create like rage bait tweets and then there's a whole thing now where it's like oh this person's rent is due that's why they're they're tweeting this very obviously out of pocket thing that they know is gonna get controversy and i see that a, a lot of the same way it's like if you know if live actions were never meant to be a thing then like we sh people negativity and positivity it'll die down naturally but because speaking add more negativity we add more positivity it's speaking it's a, of negativity though that jjk game that i i memed on a couple of uh -huh. people came to defend it last week on the comment section oh i saw i saw i saw and I saw. and and my defense is like if you like the game i think there's nothing wrong with it yeah like you can you can have fun with the jjk curse clash game but at the end of the day you kind of have to admit or i feel like you need to admit that it isn't a good game like yes. you can have fun with bad games like that, that happens all the time i have bad games that i absolutely adore I mm -hmm. play Yu-Gi-Oh, and that's whoa, the thing. Whoa, like, whoa, Yu-Gi-Oh is kind of good. It's it's good, but let me tell you, it's it's expensive. It's not, it's, it's not the they're... best. But Konami it's... is interesting. Konami is interesting. Yeah, uh, yeah, but yeah. that's my main thing. Like, I love Yu-Gi-Oh, mm -hmm. but let me tell you, it's not the best game it could have been. Yeah. And that's the same with JJK Curse Clash. And to prove my point, I have been keeping up with the Steam numbers every single day. I saw you and I've been watching it fall down. <laughs> oh my god! So let, let me—I'll look it up right now. Let me, let me. But and that's another thing, right? People came in the comments like you could that conversation we had. It could have just been done. Your opinion out there, right? But then people yeah. came out to defend it, and then you're like, "Hold on, like, yeah, yeah." Like, I'm doing my research here. Yeah, and so now you're motivated to be like, "Yeah, I." 
you could like the game and I could dislike the game, but objectively, the game isn't doing good. <laughs> like, and so, so I'm gonna look at the numbers. Every 24 hours, the peak goes down by 20%. The all time Damn. high of the game was 5,200, which mm -hmm. for some reason, I saw somebody like hyping up. They're like, yo, like 5,000 people are playing JJK. And it's like, brother, there's probably like more than 5,000 people that worked on that game. Like, I, like, I don't know. Like, it, it, it's kind of crazy to think about, right? Like, oh, yeah, it's it's huge, man. Mm, yeah, huge. I don't, I don't know. The, the 24-hour peak is now 709. Only uh -huh. 500 people are playing right now. Like, it, the, it is constantly going down. Like, the Here's numbers are on a downwards trend. Like, you is, can't defend that and say, like, oh, it's wor it's a great game, though. Like, it, it isn't. You can have fun with it, but objectively, it is just not the best product they could put out there. And the reason I'm so combative about this is because this ruins anime games in the future. It's kind of like what you said about the OPLA. OPLA was pretty decent across the board. I didn't like it, but it, it is decent. And mm -hmm. that is inspiring other live actions to come out of the woodworks. That is great. Yeah. The JJK game is bad. It's not selling well. And because of that, we're probably not going to get another JJK game for a very long time. Yeah. I, like, I, and, and that's the problem with this. I think also I love to, JJK. Give us a good game. Like like it sounds like I'm on I'm playing on both sides, but the difference in my opinion, right, is there's an obvious thing with the One Piece live action where it's like Netflix and and yeah. these like giant conglomerates and they're doing cash grab and money thing and that's that's one thing. If it was purely that, then I would be more on the side of like yeah, we I don't I dislike that like, you know, these obviously uh, like they have ulterior motives to boost up like something that we love whereas like if if the project is done genuinely and the people on the project care about the project that to me is separate right and th with the jjk thing can we honestly say that it was done because like uh like there was a lot of passion and people wanted this game it was well no five thousand people played the games it's not the, it, that's that's the indicator that no it's not a community thing that wanted this this is a corporate thing that they just want to get something in every single genre of every single media to to be a, a comprehensive uh offering and then you know like as far as as far as like the creator goes is the creator involved with the, with the game probably not because that's a lot of work and a lot of effort and it's like if the game came out like uh you know the way it did as far as what you're saying it's like it sets a bad precedent yeah it sets a bad precedent as far as like just making a game for the sake of making a game that's the problem right like making the, that's the problem with avatar and dragon ball they made the live action for the sake of making a live action because they saw the numbers not because the community wanted it not because the the author wanted it not because of anything like that that's the that's the like dichotomy here and and also it's like yeah 5000 is kind of it's low but it's, i wouldn't say it's that that's very low i wouldn't say that like cuz like uh i want to bring up another version of like people shitting on like first moving projects right if pe like if the shit storm that ai got like stuck and it, it was it was grounds to like completely shut down ai pal world and it's like pal world had four people apparently completely inexperienced working on the project and then in assistance with ai and their bootstrap like like project based knowledge they got this game that i think it netted like within a week 189 million dollars like over 20 it, million people playing the game yeah and and that's four people right and it's like the the ceo like yeah i don't know the dude but his his statements after the 189 million you know, like that's like the peak success. He's like, man, I was just aiming to play a game that people actually wanted. Like his statement for adding guns was, is like, Americans like shooting things. And I was just yeah, like, I added that, guns, man. You know, I, I gave them what they wanted. It's like, yeah, hell yeah, it's brother. So simple, like that. but it's like, like we know that like an anime game, a lot of them, they're not made with that simple minded thing. Like, huh. Hey, I wonder what a JJK fan would want to really experience. I wonder what a yeah. One Piece fan would want to experience. That's not yeah. how those things are made, right? Ash, they, they don't really care about the audience. They don't care about being a game that, you know, goes to Evo, for example. I don't even which think is like, that, but... Yeah, just... like, even if that's not the case, here's the thing, too. They apparently have broken a record for most refunds in one month. Oh, no. 
I, I saw that headline. I, I don't believe it because it's not sourced anywhere. I, yeah. I, I can't find a source. But if that does end up being true, that JJK is the most refunded game out there, I I wouldn't really bat an eye. Mm. I'd be mm. like, yeah. I, I think the reason why I don't believe it is because they said over 100,000 people refunded the game. But only and for me... Yeah, I'm just like, wait, guys, okay. 100,000 people did not buy the game. L let me tell you that right now. They, they did yeah. not make that much money. Yeah. If only 5,000 people ever in the world, like, what we're talking about, we're talking about, like, Steam in America, Europe, Japan, like, the entire wait, are world. are there other uh, platforms? Is it, is that? It's only Steam. Play? It's only Steam? Hmm. It's mm. only on Steam, and they don't sell like a physical version or like a digital version on their website. Mm. So, so this is like not including PlayStation and Xbox, pretty much. They could either be the most under the radar successful franchise. Yeah, yeah, it, it sold a million <laughs> copies on on PS Five and on, and on Xbox. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, well historically, yeah. games do sell more on Steam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, uh, they, so. Yeah, dude, like it did not sell a hundred thousand copies. I don't believe the headline, but yeah, mm -hmm. I, I feel like if I were to buy Cursed Clash, I mm -hmm. would buy it just to refund it like two hours later. Yeah, the like when I said earlier, like I don't even think it's a cash grab thing, I think it's like a resume thing. Like, nobody, if if I looked up on the wiki, like five, let's say JJK ends five years from now, yeah. right? And someone's looking back on, on, on JJK, or whatever, and they're like, oh my god, look how crazy it was! It had like four seasons, like 300 chapters, it was spanning like eight years, it had three video games, four video games. It's like, it's like it just adds to the bloat, but then also, and I'm not saying this is the case for this because i doubt that they're they're pushing money they're pushing p like this right but like um a lot of people don't realize that there's a prerogative for companies to add a failing project to a successful uh project because that failing project is a tax write-off so like the losses you get on a let's say let's say i made a marvel thing and then i created a yeah awful sony thing. does that all the time exactly exactly you know it like say yeah. all, like so many people are like oh my god why did they make this thing it's like they, it's because they made billions of dollars here so, and they don't want to pay people on that so yeah. they mark off losses there so it's, it's sony does thing. that but in a different way yeah. so sony will announce a movie they'll fund the movie like through and through and then they don't release it mm -hmm. which is how mm -hmm. they get their tax write-off which it, it's yeah. very obvious what they're doing but yeah. obviously, like, what are you going to do? Yeah. Like, are you going to go and sue them? Like, come on. Are you going to investigate yeah. and then find out that they actually did put in money, but then they are writing it off? Yeah, the yeah. only, it's like, feasible entities that could, like, sue Sony is, like, a Disney. Wait, but Disney does the same thing, too. So it's like, uh, yeah. like, if everyone every smart company it, does it. Yeah, yeah. And every company essentially does this in their own version it is almost like no corporate example like on that scale that like is absolved of that that that's just like as soon as you get a a, a finance department they're like ah time to make some shitty games like <laughs> yeah I, I hope you're ready for what this entails right like you make over a billion dollars i hope you know what we're gonna do next yeah 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 it's, it's a strategy, everything brother. everything can't be up 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 and up buddy and then it's like yeah. you know like people like Netflix. Netflix has is another example. They have lots of that too, where it's like um, canceled seasons. I wonder at what's like. There's degrees to what that canceled season stuff means. It's like, damn, there's a lot of money here. I wonder where all that money went. Uh. Yeah, they're working on it, then they canceled it. I don't know, dude. Like how much they spend, and then you find yeah. out it's like some ludicrous amount. Like, oh, interesting, interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes you see that. It's like, where did the like? It's it's like when the U.S. goes like, oh, we're gonna put a hundred trillion dollars in then X Y Z. It's like excuse me <laughs> when when did we find a hundred trillion dollars sir and it's just made up because you can do that on the balance sheet because it like does projected value and it's like if the u.s goes like oh yeah we're gonna have a hundred trillion years over the next like four centuries it's like oh okay yeah we just made that shit up then like and then they're like yep that's how it works oh my god it's so crazy but it's pretty funny yeah 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 it's funny when it's like like you just 
you're not connected to it. Like, imagine being a part of it, and then you see that, and you're just like, damn, what the hell? Then it's infuriating. What is going but, on? Like, we're just two dudes on the outside looking in, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah.